so That's kind of the purpose of the deliverance center. We're not uh, supposed to be a church and uh, We want to help people do what that guy just did, you know open up a terror cell write a book I mean go do something for God. You know, that's what we're, that's what I've been praying about for years that people would come here get delivered Learn some spiritual warfare go back to their church. We're not trying to steal people from churches We never have we're just trying to be a supplement to that system And so they go back to their religious system and you know start helping people I mean, that's the theory. That was the theory behind it. And that book thing is a, is part of the theory. You hear a ringing up there? Yeah. You hearing it now? No, I think Val took it. Is it ringing now? No, it's just like. How about over here? Okay. Alrighty then. Let's get started on our Bible study. Tonight, all right, and then Satan's secrets coming up here at the next seminar. Um, these are my radio announcements. I do them every week. I'm on every day of the week now on 10 10 a.m. Or on the internet all the time. You can catch them off the website on omnifm.com. My uh, secular uh, internet radio thing surprised me. Last week I thought I had I had peaked on the thing. I was wrong. It went from uh, 1700 listeners to 2700 I couldn't believe it See that then I had to repent so, you never As long as you're still alive you never stop repenting and you never you never arrive here 100% There's only one person that did that There wasn't two so when you uh, screw something up like I did I said something stupid. I thought maybe I've peaked at 17, 1800 listeners a week. See, I shouldn't have said that. That's stupid. Say something I had to repent after it went to 2800. So now I was expecting 28,000. Yeah, that'll teach you. Yeah, that'll, that'll teach the Lord for convicting me. I want 28,000. Yeah, take that. Okay. Uh, those of you rich people that. Uh, Unlike the deplorables, they shop at Walmart. You can smell them over there, apparently, during that hearing. The rich people go to Amazon.com. That wasn't at the hearing yesterday. And just hit there and put in our name, and they'll pay us 1.2% of whatever you buy. There you go. And, and it smells great. So good. I shop at Walmart. I don't smell anything. Of course, then again, when I go in there, I've got a pre existing smell, so I kind of blend in with the group. Same thing with good search switch over from Google and they'll pay us while you're surfing the web tonight's uh, teaching uh, That first part's going to get bleeped is on uh, YouTube channel number two tonight and uh, Here's our miracle list these things are fantastic and they cause all kinds of problems That's what you want to do with Christianity. It's either fantastic or it's a massive pain in the butt There's part of our goal writing books and opening terror cells in your church Just open up two or three people get together and say hey, we're gonna start taking down these sick people So you start picking them off. It's the best thing to do in a mega church because they won't catch you for a while <laughs> If you do it in a little church hundred people in Pentecostal only they're gonna catch you within a week But if you're in a mega church, they don't know They don't know anything going on in a mega church. I mean stuff's going on. You can't even believe in a mega church I know all about it. They come to me for counseling. You can go in there and open up a terrorist and you have 50, 60 people healed before they catch you. <laughs> I'll see you up in Prescott in a couple weeks, okay? See you up there at the Elks Performance Center. Have you ever, ever been there? I haven't either. I have no idea what the Elks Performance Center is. I, I think it's a theater, maybe. Yeah, I'm going to be teaching in a theater. There you go. Yeah. I'm moving on up like George Jefferson. These are our donation boxes. They're on the doors. They're all the doors are hermetically sealed until the boxes are full <laughs> So you will not be able to go home or donate off the website. We'll let you out one at a time 
tomorrow is our healing room. This thing's been booming. Booming. I couldn't be happier with the darn thing. It really is great. I had some reservations when we first started it. The Holy Ghost just came in. We've had one good healing after the other. If you want to join the prayer team on Saturdays and pray for sick people, go see Kelly or Karina and we'll put you on the team. If you'd like to help out. It's really exciting to see people get healed. It's a blessing. Praise God. Okay, ready for Bible study. There's a lot of people running around in church. It's spiritual loser. That's the majority of them, but a few people are spiritual winners. Now, what the devil tries to do is, man, <clears throat> he's he's smart. What he tries to do is uh, complicate the gospel, and the Holy Ghost is forever trying to simplify it. And they, these two are constantly at war. He's trying to complicate Christianity, and if he can complicate it, he can suffocate it. Complicating it creates suffocation if you simplify it it sets it free it puts it in motion and simplifying stuff is best for human beings human beings like stuff simplified unless you're a scientist and only 0.0 percent of our society is scientists so who cares about the science Nobody cares about them. They're, they don't. Well, I never, I've never even met a scientist, I don't think. Regular people like us, no offense, but I'm a regular person. We want it simple. See? Divinely inspired utterance came out decades ago. Keep it simple, stupid. If you keep it simple, it'll work. If you complicate it, it'll suffocate it. Quick example. Speaking in tongues. <clears throat> Speaking in tongues is awful. Everybody fights over speaking in tongues. Everybody fights over it. Why? The devil doesn't want anything simplified and getting out that's going to hurt him. He's not stupid. He likes to suffocate everything that hurts him. He wants to magnify everything that helps him. Duh. It's almost like a human. So he gets it complicated. See, I've been doing this for years now, and one of the first things I, I be sure I cover before the person leaves my office is their gift of tongues. And I say, uh, do you, have you ever spoken tongues before? And then I get a variety of answers. They say, uh, yes, no, I did, I used to, different answers. And then, a frequent answer I get is, uh, I did, but I'm not sure. I said, what do you mean you're not sure? Then they say, well, I, I think it was, it might be the satanic or demonic tongues. Somebody told me that. I said, okay, well, I'm an expert on that, speaking in tongues, so I have them speak in tongues for me, and then I can tell whether or not it's uh, demonic or not. And about 9 out of 10 are not. 9 out of 10 are not. Well, the devil beat them, beat them, and believe it or not, this is very common. They spoke in tongues 20 or 30 years ago. That's a common answer. I hear it all the time. And they haven't been using it for 20 or 30 years till I see them. Can you imagine that? I can imagine that. It happens all the time. 20, 30 years, they've been missing the benefits of Glosa and speaking in tongues, the devil complicated it and got everybody fighting over it. Oh, it died out with the apostles. Oh, it's demonic. Oh, this it doesn't do anything. Oh, you're just speaking gobbledygook. He goes through this routine to make something seem complicated. And as soon as it gets complicated, people kind of go, I don't want to want to hear that. I don't want to get involved in that. I want to risk it. I'm not interested. As soon as it gets complicated. That's why marriages always suck. Because people want it simple. Just keep it simple, stupid. I love him. I love her. That's the reason to get married. 
Albert Einstein. You don't get married to somebody because you love them. That's part of it. Okay, I'm not going to get any amens tonight. That's fine. I'm used to being on my own. Trust me. You don't get married just because you love somebody. If you do, guess what? There's going to be a big D in your future. You know what a D is? Oh boy. So the easy way to do it is, hey, I'm centrally attracted to this person. I seem to get along with them. Okay, we're in love. Bang! Let's get married. No, whoa, 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 whoa. There's a lot more to being married than just loving someone or finding them sexually attractive or or feeling comfortable around them or finding them funny or whatever those cosmetic and emotional things are, correct? So if you start making everybody go through premarital counseling, the people are gonna, whoa, that's that's too much for me. We're just gonna alone. People don't like complicated things. The devil is smart, man. If he complicates it, he can win it. And he's done it to the gospel, hasn't he? That was a long introduction, too long. This story here is an example of the Holy Ghost doing the opposite of what the devil does. The devil tries to, hey, uh, hey, do you mind getting me a, a bottle of water out of the out of Kelly room? Thank you. The devil tries to complicate something. If he complicates it, he can ruin it. The Holy Ghost is always trying to simplify it. And here's an example of what he did. The Spirit of God. Told us this story here. Here's how it works. You've read this story Luke 18 Jesus spoke this parable to certain Religious people who trusted in themselves. Oh, what are we talking about now the nightmare of Christianity? This is Ebola This is our doom This is us facing the silver surfer. Thank you you can't win as soon as you start trusting yourself. Right. This isn't a self-help group here tonight. Believe in yourself. You know, trust yourself. Believe you can do. No, dude, do the opposite. See, this is a this is where we're trusting in the Word of God and trusting the Holy Ghost, not me. This isn't about me. I can't do it. I can't make it on my own. I'm a genetic and inherent loser. I was born in sin. I kept sinning. My mind is in enmity with God. I can't do it. Jesus is talking to these religious people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Anytime you run into someone who is a religious person and who trusts in works and activities for their own righteousness, they always nitpick others. Those always go together. Nobody ever trusts in themselves and goes, ah, everybody else is fine. Who cares? No, they, they start nitpicking somebody else. Well, you need to do this and that. You're not doing this and that. You need to fix this and that. You need to do like I do. Well, Jesus tells in this parable, what was he doing there? Trying to simplify it. Try to simplify the gospel. If you do that, it works like crazy. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, one a telonis in the Greek. That's a tax farmer in Greek. They were tax collectors despised in their society. Worse than we despise the IRS. No offense, IRS. Sometimes they have plants. Um, <laughs> They hated these telonists. They hated their guts because the tax collectors Not only took the money from Jews and gave it to Romans, which was an abomination They skimmed off of it and the Romans knew they were skimming and that was okay with them as long as they got their money They knew the tax collector had to get his money. Well, the tax collector Wasn't the only one skimming because there was there were there was a hierarchy of tax collectors. For example, Zacchaeus was a regional tax collector. So he had, he skimmed on what came up to him. So they skimmed down here. It went to them. They skimmed. 
through the process it went to the romans They hated him So jesus chose somebody he knew these self-righteous people would hate to illustrate his teaching here keeping it simple the pharisees got up there and he prayed with himself <clears throat> god i thank you that i'm not as other men i'm not an extortioner i'm not an unjust person i'm not an adulterer and i'm not like that guy religious people always point at others you know if you come out of a christian religious system that's very uh, legalistic like uh united pentecostal or baptists or Seventh-day Adventist or Catholic if you come out of that system. That's a very behaviorally Oriented works-based justification type system. Everybody is very uh, Astute at auditing your behaviors in order to get you to please God I got to do this. I got to do that read this go here be that to please God. Are you happy now? So to speak, that's how that system works He's showing us here the, the system doesn't work like that. That's not how God works He said I fast twice a week I give tithes and Of all I possess again. You see Lucifer here in Ezekiel. I will be like the most high I will ascend to the Mount of God. I I will be in the garden of God. I will do this and I will do that. I I is the Ebola of Christianity if it's about I were in deep trouble Jewish fasting for example Deteriorated over the centuries didn't it the original law of God Leviticus 23 said there was only one fast a year well, That's doable well by as Zechariah chapter 8 had gone to four fasts a year and then in the New Testament when Jesus was there it was Up to dozens and dozens of fasts per year the Pharisees. So that's why he said I fast twice a week He was doing more than was required back then which was at that time was 120 104 fasts It's crazy. What's that telling you fasting a work a religious works doesn't work Singing in the choir as a religious work doesn't work Right God who cares whether you're singing in the choir God doesn't it's a condition of your heart The Mormon tabernacle choir can out sing anybody in this room here. They're not even saved. That's a cult They're great singers Religious works don't work Keep it simple stupid the publican whom everybody despised including religious people and that's what nitpicking religious legalists do they despise others because they nitpick them and they don't measure up hey you're supposed to be doing this and that and that you're not doing it oh you're out you're not up to our level the only way you can do that is if you have an evaluation system legalism Quenches the spirit the letter kills but the spirit Just keep it simple He smotes on his breast, okay, everybody had traditions they do in their society uh, We have them here, you know um, In Japan they go they go Like that or something like that, right? You ever seen that? Everybody has their traditions. Well, back then they had a tradition of smoting your breast when you were contrite. Okay, it's not the act of smoting, it's just the concept behind it. Okay, so if I was going to start a new satanic cult, I started two or three in the fast and they failed, so I stopped doing it. So I would just say, Well, look, they smote your breast, and what you got to do. Is Get people to start smoking their breasts see that's how you get the spirit to move see how the legalism a Coop looks at the scripture takes it out of context doesn't understand the context of the text and then comes up with a false doctrine We got to have chest motors 
if you're not smoking you're not anointed see how it takes off that's how false not she's smoking and then then the false doctors always expand from there right there's certain types of smoking and there's male smoting there's female smoting then there's mixed smoting for Pentecostals but not for Baptists and then you develop it it keeps going when you come up with a false doctrine you have to keep developing it and adding to it to make it interesting because people get bored so if you're gonna start a tradition of wearing robes Jesus wore a robe. Let's start that here. You need to get your robe on, honey. Sir, where's your robe? Oh, these two are back sweaters. <laughs> then you got to have certain types of robes after that. See, if you're going to go to robe legalism, you got to have levels of robes. So she's not going to get the super robe. She's female. He's going to get a better robe. Then the district rober will get a better robe. And then all the way up to the Pope, they get a super robe. See how it works? It's nuts. As soon as you put human carnality into the Holy Ghost, the thing bottoms out. You say, was well, it a sin to wear a robe? No, you, wear, you can wear anything you want here. I, that's not my point. My point is when you make something religious, you're on dangerous ground. <clears throat> he said, God be merciful to me. Heloskomai is the Greek word that means mercy seat. And what was he talking about? He was Jewish. He was talking about this What he was saying there to Yahweh or Jehovah the great Hebrew God Lord Put me on Lay me on the mercy seat Don't you see that where was the mercy seat oh, right where everybody wants to be? The outer court the inner court and the holy of holies you couldn't get into the holy of holies At all you were never allowed in there Oh, once a year the high priest went in the Holy of Holies. Nobody else ever got in there But when the veil of the temple was split by the blood of Jesus at the cross Anybody can walk boldly into the throne of grace walk right in the Holy of Holies and get anything their faith desires He didn't have that so he said to Jehovah brokenhearted lay me on the mercy seat Don't you see oh, the guy was broken. The Pharisee was robing and legalism. And he walked out with nothing. Check it out. Jesus said they both prayed, right? They both talked, tried to talk to God, but the the approach was different. See, keep it simple, stupid. The approach is different. If you keep it real simple, yes, you get a miracle from God. If you complicate the thing, oh boy, you're Come screwed, on. blued, and tattooed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This anointed night tonight, I can feel it. Listen, Dikaio declared innocent, the broken down, stinking, rot gut, feces ridden tax farmer walked out from God. You're not guilty. Why? Because he kept it so simple. He came to God just the way the Lord wanted people to come to him. The Holy Ghost is saying, this is how you come to God. Well, who qualifies for that? Every person from the Pope to the janitor. Every one of them comes to God just like that. Well, how shouldn't I do it? Just like the other guy. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. This sermon will preach anywhere. This sermon will preach at Teen Challenge. This thing will preach at a Catholic cathedral. This thing will preach right down the line. Keep it simple. This guy was broken. He was. He got a miracle from God. He left innocent. Justification, Nikael, means to be declared innocent. Declared innocent. A woman gave her testimony last night at the service. This woman was one of the worst sinners I had ever interviewed. 
I mean bad She had slept with untold men. She'd had six abortions. She had done on and on it went When she left my office she walked out As I sat interviewing her It was clear she was suffering from long-term depression psychologists call it the stymia And she was telling me about what she really wanted from God because I asked her that I said what would you really like God to do for you? Oh, I just wish he would Or forgive all my sins and I'm thinking to myself man, that's a good Thought because this woman uh, was a brother Paul. She was the chief of sinners. I mean, she this woman sinned so much it was unbelievable. I sinned a pretty good lick myself, and I was stunned at that. And I mean, this woman, God, she's this lady's bad. I mean, six abortions, six different men. Well, that's hard to do, Jack. Don't tell me that's not hard, easy to do. It's not. I'm not even a woman. I know that's not hard. To that's hard to do. I know that's hard. And, and the depression and the demonic infestation on six murders. Are you kidding me? Okay, I mean, that was the tip of the. And I'm sitting there thinking, I said to the woman, <clears throat> I said, now, all these horrible things you've done in the past. And I started listing some of them off, and it was it was scary. Ro- broken down marriages. Uh, uh, Massive numbers of sexual adultery. Uh, geez, it went on and on. I said, Did you ask God to forgive you for all those sins? Did you actually confess them to God? Yes, I did. Did you ask Him to forgive you in the past for those sins? Yes, I did. I said, Well, I'm not going to make the same mistake you're making. I'm not going to ask God to forgive you because God doesn't forgive sins that no longer exist. The blood only covers current sins. The blood removes the sin, and when it's gone, it's gone forever. The woman looked at me like I had dropped out of a Martian spacecraft. Her eyes boom. Her face then sunk in tears. The devil had tricked her. All these years, he had always told her, those horrible sins you did, they're still around. It was a lie. I said, You're not sucking me into your lies. I'm not going to sit here and ask God to plead with God to forgive you for sins that no longer exist. <laughs> Homie, don't play that. She broke That was it the rest of it was glorious history But that's the one thing that was killing her that was the one roadblock she didn't know There weren't any sins left to confess So I had her confess the ones that were left Doubting that the other ones were gone. That was the first one I said just pray like this Lord, please forgive me for not knowing that you had forgiven me I just went with the stuff that was left She left justified what does that mean You're declared innocent you didn't commit a felony. There's nothing on your record. You're, there's no crimes You've been declared innocent. How did he get declared innocent? The other guy complicated everything about God in the world, had it all written out, nitpicked through it. He went down his list. I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that. Pointed at him. I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do this, I don't do that. See? And he left carrying his sins with him into the gates of hell. The other guy. The scum of the earth in his eyes left 
justify it. Why? Keep it simple. simple. The Holy Ghost told this story for one reason to keep it simple man. It's just so simple everyone that exalts themselves mm -mm, Will be abased Let me tell you something being abased is not fun. It's not a good afternoon. He that humbles himself shall be Yes The last shall be first the first shall be last For many are called and few are chosen. What in the world does all this mean? God called everybody and he uses you to call him. He says, You go, you go, you go, you go. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes in his baptized shall be sozo, delivered. He that believes not, they shall be damned. Crino, judged. Well, how come everybody's not chosen? Because they didn't choose, right? The ones that are chosen are the ones that choose him. Many are called, few are chosen. Oh, that's predestination. Predestination is a, is a demonic lie. God never pre previously says you're going to hell and you're going to heaven. That's a crock of crap. He waits for you to choose. And if you choose him, you are chosen. Just keep it simple stupid. It's a bus ride Here's your ticket Well, if you don't use your ticket, you're not getting on the bus right. Duh Hey, you were chosen the preacher told you to repent. He told you mercy was there you, He told you you could be delivered. He told you, you could be healed. Are you gonna sit there and do nothing? Flatulate and squirm dude get up and go on to get on the bus make your move Christians think so bad because they want to be catered to they want the Holy Ghost to send Ma Michael the archangel around scoop up a bunch of blessings and come over like a sonic drive-in hostess and shove it over and <laughs> Michael the archangel is going to put on skates and come down and skate down here. Do you want a uh, strawberry five to kill your throat? <laughs> oh my god So stupid listen make your move Lay me on the mercy seat. That's what he said. Lay me on the mercy seat. I got nothing. Oh, when you've got nothing, you're right in line for a miracle. When you think you still got something left, another month or two left for you. Keep on plugging down the road. You're not going to make it. All right. What is Phariseeism? Anywho, well, that's a debatable subject. Here's what it looks like in our society. It's this. God, it's, gosh, this is awful. There's nothing that sucks more than a selfie. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, it's so sad. So incredibly. Sad Pharisee and it's all about me. I do this. I do that mm -hmm. Selfies are oh, how cute. This guy here is killing him. He's taking a selfie while a bulls chasing him <laughs> I gotta I gotta tip my hat to that fool <laughs> Wow a Selfie what is what are selfies? They the truth behind a selfie. It's always a soul issue. There's a wound there and I need somebody to like me because I don't like myself. I need, I need more attention because I feel so crappy about my existence on the planet. So I'll just take this picture of me and post it somewhere. This is the ultimate <laughs> selfie when you're putting your dogs up there. There they are. It's getting bad when dogs have got egos and got to have a selfie. That That's pathetic. Here's more my style of selfie. Uh, School. That kind of stuff would happen to me. That's why I don't do them because I know that kind of stuff happens to me. Things don't go right when I do selfies. It's not good for me. Luke chapter 18. Check this out. 
They brought Jesus breakfast. Now that's an interesting concept, isn't it? Or I hope it is anyway. We'll, we'll find out in a second. Breakfast is an infant nursing baby, right? And Jesus at one time was a breakfast, correct? And uh, these parents, I guess their parents or grandmother or somebody, somebody that cared about the child anyway, let's put it that way, brought this infant to him. They want him to touch him because in in religion, in Christianity, Judaism, all religions, touching is huge. It's always part of every religion. Touching is big. Even atheists like to be touched. Touching is important to a human being. And that's why God uses it. You lay hands on the sick and they show it's touching them. And then the disciples saw these the adults bring in. They weren't rebuking the infants. They rebuked the people bringing the infants, correct? Then Jesus said, suffer the ch little children to come to me. Now it looks like more of a mob scene where some of the people had breathless and others had Pideon, which is a toddler. You know, one, two, three-year-old kid. So it looked like they were a mix. My guess is most of them were parents. They may not have been, but it would have been somebody that cared. So they're bringing toddlers and they're bringing babies to him. So it's a kind of a mess with a lot of people crowding in, as you can imagine with the Son of God. He always had a big crowd chasing him. And he says, don't forbid them to bring me the toddlers, the little kids, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Okay. That's interesting. He didn't say bring me the babies. Why? Babies don't know no squat from diddle. Toddlers have got a feel for the world, but they've got kind of a natural love to them. You know, they're more open. They don't have years of garbage from being an adult where you store all this crap up in your soul. You got all these weird things going on in your mind. Kids are not like that. They're more like open. They're really they don't get jacked up till they get into grade school and junior high. So he says, bring these toddlers to me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Why? Why? How could a toddler, no education, no social standing, they've accomplished nothing. No doctor's degrees. No, no business accomplishment. No, nothing. He's saying that about toddlers. They are the ones that get into the kingdom of heaven. That's deep when you think about it. He wasn't talking to the disciples. He says, "Verily I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a," it didn't say. No. Why? Because the already were in heaven. Jesus said, "Their angels do always behold the face of my Father." Children can't sin. Because they don't have a moral compass set up yet. Their conscience. It's not fully matured. Bobby, don't touch that. And he touches it anyway. Well, he's not doing that because morally he thinks you as his mother should be executed. He's doing it impulsively and he's pooped his pants. And there's all kinds of different reasons why a kid behaves why they do. So Yahweh said these people do not have their sins, as Paul pointed out in Romans, imputed to them because their conscience has not fully matured. Preachers call it the age of accountability. But a breakfast can't doesn't know a cotton picking thing. A toddler does. A toddler knows who you are. They can give you some loving. They'll respond. They're kind of a mini adult. But they've got this openness to things. And they're kind of quick to love. And and Jesus is telling him, listen, you gotta be like a 
kid to get in. And in fact, if you're not like that, he says to the disciples, what? That's nuts. The disciples were super, superstars in training. These guys weren't people at Moody Bible Institute. These were being trained by God personally to take the gospel to the whole planet. And you and I are their fruit. We wouldn't be here if they weren't. If they backslidden and died. No one would be here. These were the superstars. As Hertz used to say, they were the superstar of Renegar. These guys were the great ones. And he points to them and says, unless you, super duper star, don't become like that. I can see the scene in my mind's eye. Jesus is probably sitting down for the long walk, and the kids are all over him. This one's sticking a finger in his ear. This one's pulling his head. This one's hugging him. That one said, he picks this one up and puts him there. What's your name? Jacob. How you doing? Good. And he goes, over. and he's just hugging the kids. And they're, they're pulling on him. They're sitting on him. They're crawling on him. And that kind of behavior is inappropriate at church. You're not allowed to go sit on somebody's lap and grab their breasts and grab their neck, kiss their face, hold their head. We want order in our churches. That's why everything's so sanitized at church. People want things just a certain way. Or they won't show up. They won't come. Jesus is saying, hey, chill. It's more important here than your church behavior. Here's the kid sitting here. This one's giggling. This one's interrupting that one. This one's rubbing his face. This one's looking at him. This is what father likes. See, that was they were genuinely being themselves around him. <laughs> Not like that Pharisee who's a typical church attendee who's fake on Sunday and lives like hell the rest of the week. See, that's a phony church thing. That's really bad. Kids are not like that. They're more, they'll act like themselves around you. If they don't like you, they'll kind of veer off immediately. You kind of know that. Ooh, they think you're Ebola. If they do like you, they'll come up and give you some love. How you doing? Is it, am I done illustrating? <laughs> I hope so. I can't do that anymore. He's trying to get you to be real around him. You know, let your hair down. Open your heart. You know, come on, make your move. Make your move. They brought same Greek word, Pidean, young children to him, Mark, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them, the parents, the grandparents, whatever. Jesus saw him. He said that he was much displeased. He said, suffer the Pidean children to come to me. And do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. He's pointing to them, not the disciples. Verily I say to you, whoever will not receive the kingdom of God as a, not a, he's not using breath, baby. They won't enter in. He picks the kids up. How you doing? Come here. Face that one. Jesus would have been comfortable in a daycare center. Pastors or not. Get off my shoe. I just signed those. Move that. God, get these kids off me. As my fly open. Judas priest. No, Jesus, we're comfortable with the day program. How you doing? How are you come here? Give me a kid. Aren't you seeing it? He was he was a people person. Don't you get it? Can't you see him? It's not a charge thing. People thing. Human thing. Real thing. Be real. Disciples came to him, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Now they're having a big church blowout. This is the, the board members of the church. They've all got together. Now they're disputing how the church should be run. That's typical for churches. It happens all the time. Jesus said, well, I'll show you. I'm not going to take anything. Hey, come here, toddler. Come over here, buddy. Stand right here, buddy. There you go. Look at him. 
Okay, put him in the middle of them. Yeah, crowd, crowd around here. Look, look down here. You know, sometimes Jesus was like uh, an optometrist. You know, he might tells you to look at the eye chart. Okay, look at look at row one. Cover your right eye. Look at what is that? A A B C D. Mmm, jeez. Look at this kid. If you do not what stray foe, if you he's pointing to the disciples, the superstars of Christianity, the big dogs in Christianity and Catholics, I think they think they were all popes or something. Uh, if there weren't popes, they were saints. Or they, they've elevated these disciples to like God-like figures. Okay, so I'm playing off of that right now. These are the disciples, the God-like figures to some religions. These were the greatest people in history. They had the inside scoop to God the Son. I wasn't there. They were there. He says to them, straight if you don't, you got to make a major change in your life to get a miracle from God. You can't keep doing the same thing you're doing. See, you got the Einstein thing going there. What's the Einstein thing? Huh? You keep doing over, over and over, expecting. Uh, thank you. Jesus said you can't be Albert Einstein and make it to heaven. You have to make an about face. You have to change and become like what? A Bible scholar from Moon? No. This kid here. See that kid right there? Gather around. Look at the eye chart. There he is. This is the type of person that gets the power yeah. of the Holy Ghost and the moving of the Spirit. Not you guys. Matthew 18, whoever shall humble himself as a little child, the same is the greatest that came It just says as a little child. Now listen. If this guy thinks he's the Pope and you think you're the mini Pope and you're okay with that, that's not humbling yourself. That's just dropping a notch down in a delusion. You didn't hear me. If you think you're the mega church pastor and you're the associate mega church pastor and you're ahead of the Production pastor and the media outlet pastor and the child development pastor and the psychiatric pastors If you think you're in there and oh, I'm in the kingdom of heaven. I humbled myself below these other kooks. No friends uh -uh. It says as a little child Not at a lower level of kookism You got to move out of Stoopville And look here. There's the Put your hand A C D D. Is that an F? There's the kid. You must be like him if you want a miracle from God. Yes. Or her. Whoever it was. Whoever receives. Look over here. There he is. What? Wait a minute. I've got a degree from here. I studied here. I, I preach over there. I do street men. I do this and that. No, 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 no. Straight fall. Yeah. Kids will cry in public. Adults can't. Oh my God. Can't do it. Embarrassing. Kids will run up and get something. They'll run to the ice cream truck. In fact, they'll run to the parents' living terror because they run and they don't look. It'll put the fear of God in you. Jesus wants you to act like a kid running to the ice cream truck. You're not looking at what people think about you. You're not staring down the pew. You are bolting in to get a miracle from God, and you don't care who sees you. That's a kid. Right, preach?
and if you do that You don't get the ice cream you get God the son Whoever offends look over here cover your eyes X Y Z B Q if you offend Somebody that came to me like a child Oh boy Mikros is the little one the least one right That's why Paul was talking about your body. He says hey the body can't exist independent of itself Hey, some people are eyes. Not everybody can be an eye. Some people are ears. Not everybody can be an ear But the eye and the ear the finger the foot all have Equal importance to God because they all function as a whole the body of Christ and They're all needed in the body of Christ. Therefore you can't put down your feet if you're an eye and I can't put down the ear if you're Now he's saying if this person comes to me like a little child and you offend them Man, you're in trouble boy It's better for you so Jesus chooses something culturally fearful. What was that? Wow, this was really fearful because it was very common for people to drown. Yeah, they didn't have big cruise ships. They had fishing boats. If they got caught out in a bad storm, it was very common to lose relatives through drowning. And everybody feared drowning. That's why the disciples were so petrified. They're sitting on a boat in the middle of a storm and they all know they're gonna die They look up and they see this phantom. It says a phantom coming to them. They all screamed It says they all were screaming and crying out Why they were scared to death Probably thought it was the death angel They believed in that Hey, we're gonna die. It's over Everybody was fearful of drowning so Jesus uses that Analogy to make his point brilliantly. Brilliantly. He says, Hey, you better you'd be better off if you were forcibly drowned by execution. Hanged around your neck and shoved overboard. Then offend one of these broken people that come to me. Is he talking about kids? No. I'm talking about people that are really being like a kid an adult anybody like a kid coming to God Well, that's embarrassing. What are they crying down there for? Oh, they're kneeling down. Oh God. I can see their their skirt went up. I saw their panties. Oh geez what embarrassing See as soon as you come to God other people will nitpick you Why do you think they have those uh, things in church we have them here too Why do you think people have those things they throw on people? Uh, it's like a little uh, what do they call them things? What? What? Throws. Throws. They're called throws. You th no, you throw it. That's a verb. What is this thing called that you put on Cloth. naked cloths? Okay, great. <clears throat> All right. Let's get deep. This is a cloth you throw. Thank you. I, I never get any help here. I'm always on my own. Listen, where do you think that concept came from? It's exactly. As centuries ago, somebody came to God with a broken heart. A woman, probably. They always get the worst crap. It's the women. Since she falls down in tears. Oh, you saw up her dress. Oh, geez. Unbelievable. That's outrageous. So then these people, staring up her skirt, start nitpicking it. He goes to the pastor. Oh, so you got a skirt exertion there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Jesus. Oh, then the pastor goes, oh my god, I gotta fix it. We can't be losing members and units of revenue over staring up women's skirts. So they come up with cloths you throw. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that's how that started. See? The Holy Ghost doesn't care what you what you look like. He cares about your heart. He wants to help you hear. Not sit and stare up your body, how you look and how you cry, or how you sit there. Did you do this right? Is that comfortable? Are other people feeling comfortable when somebody starts crying? Insecure people in the congregation they start to get uncomfortable right. once they start getting uncomfortable 
the pastor starts getting uncomfortable because that uncomfortable person may go somewhere else where they feel comfortable and if they do there goes the children's church listen Jesus said Luke 14 when you want to do something for God he says don't call your buddies right and don't call your relatives so goodness don't do that because here's how this works you scratch my back I'll scratch your back right Wall Street uh, politicians perfect examples all these living breathing crooks in our society they scratch each other back TV preachers laundry money for each other this one sends thousands to that one this one will send thousands to that one. <clears throat> you rub my back and I'll I'll scratch your back no Jesus said here's here's how you really become fabulously wealthy with God here's real wealth not Buffett here he says when you do something for somebody call the opposite of your friends call the Naparis the people who have amputees no arms no legs lame people blind people, people that are at the bottom and people that nobody else likes and Make sure they are people who what cannot ever pay you back Then Then it goes on your account in heaven when you know you will never be reimbursed for when you did something for somebody that went on your account if you think you can get a scratch back you lost your heavenly glory you got to wait for your scratch and if you know people like I do waiting for people to come up and scratch you you may be waiting a long time yeah they don't show up half the time they're not in the mood to scratch but they're in a very aggressive mood for you to scratch them when they want help they want it now when you need help you can't find them they're gone that's right you need help it's like a rapture happened nobody's here this is God's honest truth this is dirty preaching but it's true preaching if you want to be big with God Come to him like a little child. Come broken like the tax collector. Help somebody out you know will never pay you back. You're not even looking to get paid. That's right. Not even looking for it. That's how you develop real wealth with God. Acts chapter 20. When they came to Paul, he said, You know what? From the first day I showed up here. He says, I've been with you through everything. Now that's a friend. A real friend will stick with you through thick and thin. Really. Serving the Lord with what? Humility of mind. Okay, now here's the greatest Christian that ever lived. This guy's anointing was greater than any Christian ever lived. This guy's anointing was beyond belief. Wigglesworth would have been amazed at this guy. That's how powerful he was. He says, hey, I came in here like a regular person. How do you know all these phony religions all this crap imams and popes and all these people cardinals? How do you know it's all crap? I just told you Dude, I just told you they don't come here like a regular person They they exalted themselves people who exalt themselves. They will be abased People humble themselves they will be he said, I came to you humility of mind just like a regular person look I came to you with tears I had to have a throat cloth on me I, I stayed here with all through these temptations that fell on me the Jews were hunting me like crazy but I held back nothing well that's a real friend isn't it? somebody that'll just go all the way with you incredible I gave you everything I could give you that I knew you needed. I did everything for you that could help you. I taught you everything 
publicly I taught you privately. I went from house to house to teach you. I went through the Crusades. I did everything I Testified to the Jews the Greeks what did I do? You ever wonder what you should be repeat or pre preaching? Well, here's a quick sermon breakdown for you. I told them all one Repentance yeah, you can't get anywhere with God without repenting. It's impossible You say well, I'll just get in the choir at Hillsong Oh, I'll be singing like crazy laser light show. I've got it all. You've got nothing without repenting Have you ever counseled people in choirs? How about how about Christian music groups? Have you ever met them? Don't do it. You can't believe the corruption and the sin going on in these Christian singing groups. Oh, you're just blaspheming people. Dude, they sit in my office and tell me. See, I know things because I know them. I'm not like most people who know things because they think they know them. I was told from the horse's mouth. There's so much corruption going on in these worship teams. You can't even conceive or believe it Adultery is running rampant in these mega churches and these choirs when you're watching up there and see this giant choir up there Unbelievable crap going on Singing Christian Jesus rock Glory to God Go no money Drunk later that night uh, sleeping with her. Come on, Jesus! You can't even believe it. You wouldn't believe the crap going on in these churches. You wouldn't believe it if I told you. And that's why I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Number two, faith toward God, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's your message, friend. That message will preach anywhere, and the Holy Ghost will jump right on that thing. Yeah. Repentance. Toward God and faith toward Jesus Christ man. That's powerful yeah. Wow the greatest preacher ever lived here. There's the guy I'm learning from him Romans 12 I say to you by the grace given to me that that every one of you should not think of themselves more highly than they ought to think but think soberly Why is that because people that are elevated in Christianity with titles and degrees and so on You got to understand that God gave you a measure of faith when you got saved and, he, and this person here got the same one So you you're the same you started out the same Every born-again Christian gets click the measure of faith What you do with that measure is Up to each individual person some people lose it or just bury their talent. Some people develop it fivefold, tenfold, right? That's true. And what we're trying to do here, obviously, is to get you to develop your measure of faith. But everybody starts out, click, with the same one. So you can't criticize me, and I can't criticize you because we started out at the same starting line. Click, born again, start here. It's like playing Monopoly. You start here. James chapter 4. He gives more grace, wherefore he said, he's quoting out of Proverbs, God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Now, how does God resist them? By uh, sending angels to attack them? No, you can resist someone by just. Notice that? I didn't hurt them. I didn't hit them. I didn't yell at them. I just Remember when you were a kid you come up You had to find out what kind of mood your dad was in You had to figure that out quick because it modified your behavior Well if you backed out the door You weren't hurting anybody or hitting them, but you were resisting there's passive resistance and there's aggress aggressive resistance, correct? Yes. Dr. Martin Luther King was a nonviolent resistor, right? The kooks we've got now, 
beat you up in the restaurant There's different forms of resistance. Well God's form of resistance is not to clobber you but he Hey, I can't answer that prayer. I can't give you that anointing. I can't grant that request because of click 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 So you got to fix the clicks How do you do that God resists the proud he gives grace to the humble. Just keep it simple First Peter humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God he will exalt you in due time one number two So you can do what? Exactly Here's how you're gonna pray not gonna pray anymore Lord I asked you to help me with this 50 times <laughs> Okay, that te- method of casting your care upon God is not going to work because you forgot part one of the casting of care process which is number one I, yeah, this is this is a frustration prayer. Jesus, help me! Come, come on, Lord, can you kick this thing? That's your venting. That's not intercession. That kind of praying don't won't work. I know from personal experience. I've done it before. I have. I already told you the story. I drove home one night. This was about twenty-five years ago or something. I pulled over to the side of the road got out of my pickup and walked out in the middle of a yard field middle of the field And I started yelling at God That's right. I yelled at him. I straightened him out <laughs> Oh, man, I I had him on his heels I told him, I gave him a piece of my mind. I had like two or three pieces left when I got back to the truck That was it. I was I could barely drive home You know what happened after that? After I got through yelling at him, straightening him out, asking him why, why, why. Yeah. Nothing happened. Nothing. Yeah. I drove home. I heard crickets. What was he doing? Father to son. I'm sorry. I can't. You're yelling at me. That's not how we do it. This is too deep for some of you. First, you've got to humble yourself to get the casting process to work. See, I've asked the Lord a thousand times to help with Billy. When is God going to? You forgot number one. Frustration prayers are heard, but they're put on hold. This is the third job I got fired from God You're gonna get fired from the fourth one (laughs) Do number one first after the first firing and then we don't have the second and third firing Who do we always attract the same type of man Go to number one first and let's cut down on these men then cast your care upon the Lord because he cares for you number one first number two second it's called Holy Ghost math one comes before two I went to school first you humble yourself then you cast all your care upon him and then he takes your load and makes his move All right, let's close by going over the real sinners prayer uh, My daughter and I we watch Joel Osteen sometimes on Sunday morning. It's an uplifting message. I like it It makes you feel better He says a thousand positive things and people need we need positive things. There's nothing wrong with that But at the end of the show uh, he gives a 15 second prayer to get saved. Joel, my oh man, buddy, he's trying. Okay, but here's the real sinner's prayer. That prayer doesn't. The sinner's prayer, as we know it, doesn't work. That's just something people recite. 
the real center of prayers comes from the guts It means something to the person You can feel a real sinner's prayer and There's one sinner's prayer in the Bible. Let's read it together. This is how it should go not like Joel Osteen does it Here's how it goes King David the, 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 the greatest king of Israel and the prince of sinners this guy was a spectacular winner for God and an incredulous loser. I love King David and Peter. They make me feel good because they've done great things for God and there's massive screw-ups. They're just gasping screw-ups. They're a cluster something if you were in the military. I can't say the rest of it, but that's what they were. I like people like that. I feel at home God forgave them and built them into greatness. That's the kind of person I like I, I don't relate to the person that started off well and ended up great and it went peachy clean all the way I don't like that person Because I can't relate to them things have not gone well for me and I I like that person that gets down and then God brings back I'm just sharing my own thought. Maybe you're not agree with it. If you don't, that's fine. Psalms 51 is the real sinner's prayer. And if you care about the anointing and about your ministry and about your future, or you want to get saved and fill whatever you want from God, you better learn this prayer from the king of Israel who really knew how to pray it. He said, Lord, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies. Do what? Wow. King David wanted everything people want now. People have never changed. When I die, I don't want God to bring up all of my crap. I want somebody to come and just blot it out. King David. He was just like us. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. That girl that gave her testimony last night in my office said that to me. I just wish I could be clean. She had lived a horribly sinful life, terrible sins. So had King David. Every Christian wants this. Wouldn't that be great? I want to be washed from my iniquity. What a joyous. Concept I would be free of iniquity cleanse me from my sin. Oh Jesus, thank you But I wouldn't give to have my iniquity washed away forever and to be completely clean from sin What a incredible joy To be like that I Acknowledge my transgressions and My sin is ever before me listen. He's a 21st century Christian if you're not going to confess your sins to God and you're not going to face it God's not going to deal with it for you And so these preachers have to get the people Peter's a preacher. He has to get the people to face it Because if they bury it His altar call is not going to go well. If they don't if they face it the Holy Ghost is going to move Bang! Just like he done that sinner in the Pharisees. He lay him right on the mercy seat. That's how this works. But if you cover it up, you're not going to face it. Hey, sorry. Going to have to wait another month or two or a year, whatever you're on. And you got to keep going year after year, month. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. Why? You got to do a strafo. You got to make it about face and change. Or you're going nowhere. Right. Nothing can be done. The sinner's prayer says, Against you and you only have I sinned. Oh, gosh. People are so sorry for their sin, man. I used to be in the prison ministry and I traveled all around the state going to different prisons. 
there was all kinds of people I ran into they were sorry for their sin But I found out later. They were just sorry. They got caught You see you can be sorry for your sin and your situation stinks and everything's rotten now and have you cried lately? I have yesterday. I cried yesterday. What were you crying over? Oh things were this and that and that Okay, those tears are not going to help us Peter that ain't going to help crying over your circumstances. That's good But then we got to go to the other tears and you cry over the tears that you caused God to cry over your behavior and your attitude Father was weeping over you as you kept sinning and breaking his heart and you have to deal with what you did with your heavenly father he was the one that was hurt the most yes. well don't I have to do yes you might apologize you might have to make restitution you might have to make a call you might have to send an email you better do it father requires you to do it but if that's all you do and you don't handle what you did to your heavenly father oh we're gonna have blockages all the way down no deliverance no healing no inner healing Whoa. Oh, oh. when you hurt somebody else you hurt them but you hurt your heavenly father more why because he's the only person that ever completely totally loved you he's the only person well, my mother loved me yeah your mother loved you but it wasn't divine agape love it was Strong love, but it wasn't godly love. You are completely loved by God. And when you hurt her and when she hurt him, you hurt your heavenly father first. And if you don't deal with that here and face it, when I hurt all these people and when I hurt myself, I really hurt you, Father. If you face that, you're getting healed. So that you might be justified when you speak. What's he saying there? Listen, if you want a miracle from God and you want the anointing, you want these gifts, you're gonna to have to stop making excuses and pointing your fingers at other people. This is between you and God, not between you and what they did to you. But 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 as soon as you go into your butt routine, there goes your anointing. Oh, that never happens. It happens all the time, right in my office, constantly. My, well, my parents did this and that, and they, they, if they'd only done it this way, and if that would have happened, and if, if, if I could have gotten this, and if I'd had that job, and if I hadn't talked to that person. Hey, when you're through budding and you're through ifing, now you've got to go get healed. So get your buts and ifs done now, and then come down and get your miracle and repent of it. Make a strefo, an about face from buts and ifs. And stop self justification. Mike, why are you always beating on people? I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm trying to place you in a perfect spot to get a miracle from God. It sounds like I'm beating people down. I'm not, I'm actually helping you. Psalms 51 still. God desires truth in the inward parts. Oh my god The church crap is not what God looks at Everybody is holy at church You put on a good front you even put on better clothes in my, most churches. I used to wear a tie to church There was no problem because I wore a tie at work. So it was a natural thing. I always wore a tie. And then the pastors told me it was godly to wear a tie. <laughs> they, they said, you got to give God your best, buddy. That's what they said. Yes, I am not. That's what exactly what I was told. I thought, thought to myself, well, that sounds about right. You got to give God your best. So why not look my best? And I'm thinking, well, I can wear anything and look great. But I wore a tie. Click. Listen, God, the front you put on to other people and your neighbors and your church and the God bless you crap, the Holy Ghost looks past that stuff. He don't he don't see that. He looks what's really in there. Okay? And you have to focus on it. 
like that lady did yesterday. I just wish I could be clean inside. She said, wow, so happy to see her get healed. In the hidden parts, that's what it is. What's he talking about there? People half the time don't even know themselves. I don't know how many people I've had sit in my office in counseling and said, my God, now that you've said that and put it that way, and now that I see this and I've, I, I've told you that, my goodness, I don't feel like a very good, and they're suddenly getting these revelations of what a rotten piece of human crap they are. And as soon as I see that, I got to be quick to say, hey, that's true, but grace, where sin abounds, grace abounds more. I can't let them dive into a, you know, that demonic hole. As soon as they start there, you're on the right track. See, they're getting a revelation of the crap they've buried and the lives they've sunk. It's all lies. And you do it as a defense mechanism. You don't want to have to face yourself. There's things about yourself you don't want to face. You can't stand it. So you bury the stuff. Well, if you do that, you're not going to get healed. You got to face it. And then the sinner's prayer, God, purge me with his son and I will be clean. Wash me. I will be white as snow. That's what you really want, right? Sometimes I do community service type work here. His sobs are real healthy for you, apparently. Did you know that? Go ahead and get a couple. Chew it up tonight. You can get some oil if you don't like to eat the plant, I guess. I'm not sure. I don't really follow all this. But his sops were like brushes, right? They're made out of plants. And Moses used it to save Israel. He said, hey, put the blood like that over the doors. And when the destroyer comes through, he'll look at the blood and pass over that home. And it was done with hyssop. It's like a paintbrush, right? And that's what he was saying. Purge me with hyssop and make me clean. Wash me and I shall be white as snow. And then he prayed what this woman was dying to have, joy again. People that have depression and sadness and are self-absorbed with negativity would love to be happy again, have joy. Oh, they would love to have it. They get this Rodney Dangerfoot kind of heaviness on them all the time. They wake up, the heaviness is they go to bed. It's there. And once that's lifted off the person, they're like a new person. That lady was testifying, was a totally new person in the office, completely renovated by the Holy Ghost. That had nothing to do with me. It was a miracle. Gladness. Oh, people want to get out of the gloom, don't they? Oh, there's so much gloom now, particularly in the news. Oh, it's bad. The bones which you have broken may rejoice. Oh, here we go. He's just like a 21st century Christian. Did God break the bones or did he allow them to be broken? Job said, God gave me the... No. Yeah. Why? It's the law of sowing and reaping. We're all subject to it. But Christian or sinners, you will eventually reap what you sow. So a God, a God allows bad things to happen to you because he's trying to get through to you, trying to help you. Then he said, hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. What a wonderful prayer that is. Created me a clean heart. Oh, I've counseled so many sex addicts over the years. You wouldn't believe how tormented these poor souls are. They are so sick of porn. You can't even imagine it. They just want to be clean again. They can't even remember when they were clean before. They can't even remember it anymore. They're so sick. And renew. Oh, I would love to feel right and do what's right and think right the right way 
wouldn't that be so nice if we could just stop these racing negative thoughts? Oh my God, driving me nuts. Wow. Cast me not away from your presence. I have had hundreds of people tell me, have I lost my salvation? Um, I think I've lost my salvation. I can't feel God anymore. What's wrong with me? He, has he left me? These are legitimate questions I hear all the time. Where am I, where am I getting these questions from? Not the people. It was the demons that told them that. Yeah. They're simply repeating to me what the demons told them. You lost your salvation. You're not saved anymore. You, you wouldn't be if you were saved. You wouldn't have done that. We told you to do that, and then you did it. But that, but here's I think I've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. I've heard that over a hundred times. What'd you do? What'd you do to blaspheme the Holy? Spirit? Oh, I got mad one night, and I told the Lord. I said. Jesus said, all, all blasphemy, any kind of blasphemy is forgivable. Except one. And me pulling my truck over, getting out in the yard. I walk out in the field and give God a good yell and I straighten him out good. He's never been the same since. I may have saved the world. I was not blaspheming. An unforgivable blasphemy. Yeah, what I did was asinine, ignorant, stupid, and add every description to it you can. I don't have the time for the rest. I should never have done that. That was 100%, 1,000% wrong. Uh, but I was so frustrated. You know, you, you, sometimes you do stuff because you're frustrated. And you're tired. I was tired of this and that, and I was frustrated. Guess I'm the only one. But anyway... The demons always whisper to you, you've lost them. You've blasphemed the Holy Spirit and the God left you. That's a common lie. I mean, you hear it all, can't you? Peter, you hear it, you hear it all the time. Every time you minister, somebody says that. Particularly at the drug center. Particularly at addicts. Common, common thought. God's left me. He has not left you. He's trying to get through to you. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Wow, of course that's what you want. Give me freedom. He wants to be free. King David could be sitting right here tonight. He'd fit right in just a regular person. This is how regular people should be praying. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. Sinners shall be converted to you. You wouldn't believe how many people over the years have I've counseled who who have religious spirits. They have these familiar spirits that specialize in Christianity. They're Christian demons. And they're incredibly intelligent. I never cease to be amazed how bright they are. And they encourage people to evangelize. They tell them to do it. And they pick people out for you to evangelize to. They tell you to do it. Tell that person God loves them. Go ahead. Tell him, tell him he wants to save them. Go on. Tell him. Tell him about Jesus. Talk to him about Jesus. Tell him. Tell him God wants to save you. Tell him God loves him. There you go. Tell them about Jesus. And the person that they're witnessing to is a plant who is loaded with spirits. And the person gets angry at them or doesn't receive them. And they have spiritual power. So they put curses on that Christian who was evangelizing. I'm not kidding. The spirits tell the person to evangelize others. So they will trigger the spirits and the others to take an offense. 
this is a hundred percent true story it just happened to me I'm on the phone talking to someone I'm not making this story up I'm not making this one up. This woman uh, slips and meets a guy at a funeral, and goes home with him and has sex with him. And this woman is a spirit-filled Christian struggling and After that the next day She calls the guy up Probably out of guilt and witnesses to him She explains to him that he has been this is not nope. Nope. I'm not No, I already told you I'm not making this up And Within a few days uh, She's starting to get sick And I said to her What did he say when when you explained to him that he needed to go through deliverance and he had demons He said he got mad He got mad Now let me get this straight You committed adultery with this man correct yes You went home the next day correct yes You called him back the following day Correct? Yes, I did. And you witnessed to him about Christ and you told him about you could tell he had demons and he needed to go through deliverance, correct? Yeah. And then you you haven't been well lately. You're you're not feeling well lately. That's correct. Would it surprise you to know that a demon in your head told you to call him back? And tell the poor guy he had demons and he needed to get saved and he needed to turn his life over to the Lord. Would it, would it surprise you to know the devil did that? Why? Yeah. Come on, folks. Yeah. You, you can fool people and we fool each other all the time. Let me tell you something. You can't fool spirit beings. The beings in the spirit well, they see stuff. We don't see They hear stuff. We don't hear yeah. And if you're sleeping with men as a form of evangelism and Then you are explaining to them the gospel and they need to get delivered As they say in Mongolia some sing wong And you're going to get a curse put on you because that was a setup to piss that guy off. Can you imagine what that guy was thinking? Well, you two, you, I mean, he, he would have rejected Christ, I mean, hands down from a phony person like this because the devil would have told him, Can you believe she, she's, she's self righteous? She's telling you you need deliverance? No wonder he put a curse on it. He got mad. Of course he did. I could have told her that before she called me. What's the point of this story? Listen friends, you got to go through our Bible study last week You got to get cleaned first Before you go into ministry if you don't you're going to pick up transfers and you're going to get caught in embarrassing situations You got to go through your own personal cleansing first Before you go into the ministry. That's God's method of doing it. He doesn't do it vice versa Then I will teach that after God did all these things of cleansing him and purifying him and changing his heart Then he said I will reach out to others 
in america we don't do that if you're a breathing body and you're available and you go to some half-baked mickey mouse two-bit church they're going to put you to work what do you want to do i want to teach sunday school i want to lead the uh Worship service. I want to do this. I want to do that. Okay. We don't have any available bodies. You're in Did you check that person out? Do they have demons? Did they go through deliverance? Have they been cleansed? Oh, we're too busy to check people out here. We need to put people to work for the Lord <laughs> They're putting people to work for the Lord Yeah, boy bring bring the spirits into your church. Yeah, get everybody chuck full of them. Good job Good job See but the Holy Ghost said hey, hold on Let's go through cleansing first and then we go into ministry. I just popped a billion bubbles tonight. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me <laughs> Then he said I will teach sinners the way then I will help others Amen. see Help yourself first then go help somebody else right. yeah. Wow, it's so simple, but it's so complicated. Nobody gets it and then they'll be converted. But if you sleep with them first and then preach to them, they're going to think you're a hypocrite. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ta! Jeez, Mike, you're so smart. Oh my goodness. But if you're not sleeping with the same thing, though, if, if you're if you're not cleansed and they see you doing some ungodly thing, saying something, doing something, it may not be sex, it could be anything. The devil will highlight that. I mean, with neon lights, Klieg lights, look at that. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ sucks, right? Of course he does. How do you know that? Because the guy told you about Jesus Christ and look what he's doing. Right? That's how the devil does it. He uses fools, ignorance, and imbeciles to live ungodly lives but preach something else they're not living. This isn't stuff road scholar study. This is just common. Sense. Then they will be converted. Why? Because they're listening to the gospel of Christ from someone who's Christ-like, who's renewed their mind, who has the mind of Christ, and who demonstrates the love of God. Then they're convinced, hey, this person's the real deal. Maybe Jesus is real and really the real deal. Yeah. Translation do the opposite of the guy on TV He's out whoring around spending money on everything he can get his hands on do the opposite of that show some integrity <laughs> Did he say integrity Elizabeth I'm coming home You desire not sacrifice Lord if you did I would give it Wow, you do not delight in burnt offerings. What's he saying there? You can sing your head off at the choir, feed the homeless to your fingers fall off. It doesn't matter. It's in here. It's in here. It's internal spiritual integrity. King David is saying here. This is what he's looking for. For the sacrifices of God. Are not doing a bunch of church things. What it really is is the tax collector at the synagogue. This one, his head's down. He's beating his chest. He's got a broken spirit. That's when you get miracles. That's when the Holy Ghost moves. That's when demons leave. That's when bodies are healed. That's when mentally ill people have their Minds restored. There it is. I've been in deliverance too long, I think, because when I meet new people and they start quoting the Bible to me, many years ago when I was a church person, if somebody was quoting the Bible left to right, I'd go, Boy, that person really loves the Lord. They're, they're studying their scriptures. That's great. I wish I could rattle off scriptures like that. That guy, that guy's spiritually deep. <laughs> They're really they've got their game together. Yeah. Oops. Boy, was I an ignorant fool. Wow. You hear somebody start quoting scriptures to you, you better run out the dope. <laughs> God almighty. They're sick. 
quoting scriptures ain't gonna do you a bit of good. It's how you live in here. You can quote scriptures to your face, falls off. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. What God looking for? What sacrifices? Can I give money? Can I give it? No. Here's what God wants you to give you. A broken heart. Oh, wait a minute. I work in the church. I take the offering and then I then I sweep out the cheek. Okay, those things are great and those things need to be done. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not criticizing it. That's not a substitute for a broken heart. That does not prove anything. You working in church proves nothing. Yeah. You wouldn't believe how many people work in church, and if you followed them home, you would have thought you moved into Freddy Krueger's house. <laughs> you wouldn't even believe the sick people at home you talked to 20 minutes ago at church. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. Why? They never went through the cleansing first last week's study. They never actually got saved the way you're supposed to get saved. They never said a real sinner's prayer with a broken heart. They never strafo made an about face and became as a little child. They never learned to love like a child. They never learned to cry like a child. They never learned to change like a child. They wanted to do it their way. They went to church and prayed, prayed with themselves. Blah 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 blah. Amen. Every time you see an echo in a prayer, you know you're in trouble. Yeah. Amen. Oh boy, I got to get out of here. <laughs> when you hear somebody gutting out a prayer and they can barely talk. You can be sure the Holy Ghost is over there. He's not sitting over by you. He's right over on that guy. It's the truth. If you don't believe me, you can read Matthew chapter 8 and 9. I'm telling you. Every miracle that occurred in those two books happened as a result of desperate people. Desperate people are not like church people. Church people are like this. As the church service goes longer, <laughs> they go like that. Then they develop itches. <laughs> then they develop time concerns. <laughs> then they. Thanks, Peter. I'm old. He's not. Then they go. You know what? This, oh my God! Then they click the wrong button, and a bag of porn pops up. <laughs> oh jeez, oh good God! Oh my goodness. That's terrible. They're not terrible because they're convicted. They're terrible because they're embarrassed that somebody might have seen it. All these sick church people never went through the sinner's prayer. They just had a desire for God. They had a little touch there. They got saved. Okay, I'm saved. Then they got back into the God business. Now they're helping out a church. And they're doing a good job because they feel better and they've pacified their conscience. You don't need that. If your heart breaks and you get healed, you don't need your conscience pacified anymore. Your conscience is clear. You will not despise anybody, anybody like that. The Pharisee? No, he backed off. The tax farmer went right over there. Picked him up just like he prayed, laid him on the mercy seat. Okay, let's close with this. Uh, I want to show you something here. These old preachers saw about every miracle in the book, they really did. Uh, these two guys here had super anointings. 
neither of them ended to up too good, but that doesn't matter uh, If you come to God here and you end up a failure here God does not cancel out this because you're gonna fail there. He takes you as you are. You know, Billy Graham really didn't have it. He said, just come as you are. That was a good one. If you come now with a broken heart, God will give you these gifts and this power. Even though in his omniscience, he knows you may fail down the road there. Okay? So these two guys all had Psalms 51 in the beginning. They all had broken, crushed hearts. Right? Oral Roberts was pastoring a sleepy church in Oklahoma and he couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't stand it anymore. He said he was preaching to the same people every Sunday. They were all good people. He was a good person. His wife was great. He couldn't take it anymore. He said, there's got to be more to Christianity than this. There's got to be. He, so he started praying. And he started fasting. He started praying and fasting. His family and friends were going, Hey, Oral, what, what are you, sick? You got cancer? Man, dude, you're losing a lot of weight. And finally, at the end of his fast and prayer time, he said, You know something? I'm going to put this to the test or I'm going to quit. He goes down to the hardware store in... Uh, and he goes in and applies for a job, and the guy hires him as a uh, clerk at the hardware store. He was getting out of the ministry. He said uh, he took every penny he had, and he rented the downtown auditorium. He said, I'm going to hold a healing service there, just like they had in the Bible. And I'm going to spend my last nickel on it, and if nothing happens at the healing service, he says, I'm quitting the ministry and I'm going to work at the hardware store. And the guy said, you can have the job. He says, well, I got to do something Saturday. So I'm not, I can't take the job now, but I might be back. Rents out the auditorium. You ever read this story? Huh? You never read his autobiography? Oh, it was great. In the in the end, yeah, the guy cooked out. But I'm talking about the beginning when he when this was all real in the beginning. He rents this auditorium out, and he has a regular church service. He don't know any better. Sing and worship songs. Take up an offering. The guy brings the uh, offering total back to him, and he told the Lord, he said, "I got to have that offering covered." Or I'm heading to the hardware store. Comes back and there's like five dollars more. Paid the bill. Oral goes, well, that's one down. And then he goes, I'm going to preach a sermon on healing just like in the Bible. He gets up there and cranks it out. He says, okay, who wants to be healed? Well, some lady, old lady. With a disabled hand. Staggers out of the seat. Who wants to be healed? I do. She raises her good hand. She gets up. Hobbles out in the thing. Oral jumps off the stadium. The platform. Jumps off. Runs over to the old woman. Grabs her by the hand. This hand. The bad hand. Raises her hand. In Jesus mighty name. Be healed. And the woman's hand goes oh, right in front of everybody. Total bedlam. Everybody's leaping out of their seats, running down to the front. He said not everybody got healed, but there were so many people that did get healed. There was no question. God had answered my prayer. He goes back to his church, turns in his resignation, and started his worldwide ministry. Bill Branham grows up in a shack with a dirt floor. 
comes home from first grade every time he comes home from first grade he's walking home no shoes he hears something in the trees every time he passes that tree sounds like somebody's talking to him he runs home every day afraid dropped out of the third grade a broken man a weeper How do you do down the stretch? He did poorly, but he started out with Psalms 51 just like Oral did And even if you're going to end up badly, it doesn't matter to God I don't mean no matter because he's not concerned. It doesn't matter. He'll still use you now He'll take you now as you are even if you're going to fail later. God doesn't do that to people He doesn't prejudge them like humans do you meet the conditions now with a broken heart you get the benefits now It doesn't matter whether you 20 years from now you backslide and become a brothel distributor Right now on your knees the Spirit of God comes here now Two examples of it Oral got cooped out of his mind. He got into medicine and seed faith crap and left his ministry, but it doesn't matter in the beginning that guy had an anointing that was mind-boggling And you are next who are these people Wow This poor woman here saw every miracle in the book She buried most of her 11 children. She had to bury most of them imagine that she was a broken Humble person God could trust her with any kind of miracle any miracle when she came to town the whole town shut down Everybody got saved in the whole town bar shut down whorehouses down Sister Edders in town everybody's getting healed thousands of millions Who's this guy this guy invented healing in America? He started faith healing in the United States He, he the whole town of Zion, Illinois, every person in that town was healed. Every single person. The healing center there, people came from all over the world. And what happened to the guy? Well, he got he got cooped out and he lost his mind. But in the beginning, don't you see it? He had Psalm 51. He was a broken man. And God uses people that are broken. People with attitudes. Those get shuffled over here to the recycle bin. The broken people get the Holy Ghost quickly Even if they fail later, it doesn't matter She never failed he did completely me cracked up Who are these two people? <clears throat> wow, I saw Catherine Coleman in person. It was unbelievable unforgettable The only person she really loved in her whole life was her dad he started out as a Baptist preacher. Nobody wanted women preachers. They hated women preachers. She should travel around to little churches. She gets the call. Her dad been in an accident. He's sick. She races back and misses the funeral. She is destroyed. He's dead before she got home. Don't you see it? Can't you see Psalms 51? Can't you feel it? Yeah, nobody liked Catherine Coleman. They all thought she was this and that and that and that. She was extremely criticized, but the Holy Ghost liked her. <gasps> there wasn't a miracle in the book she didn't see. Why? She was broken before God. Yes, God used her dad to move her over to that spot. That's true. Sometimes God does use difficult things in life <laughs> to move you to a place you won't go on your own. That's true. He had to move her. Over there and it was hard and it hurt she never recovered from it, but Oh man, the Holy Ghost I saw it So with a teenager this guy here. Oh a plumber third grade dropout Couldn't spell cat if you spot him in the scene eight his wife taught him to read 
got a nasty temper Wow Saw every miracle in the book Why he was a broken man Somebody walked up to him one time and said how where do you get all this massive Holy Ghost power at? Where did this come from? He said I'll tell you the truth. I'm a broken man I'm lonely I lost my wife there's a story about how he lost his wife in the book. It's unbelievable. Never heard anything like it. She dies and he runs home and prays for her and she comes back to life. She says, why'd you bring me back? He says, I can't lose you. No, I need you. What are you doing? His wife was the preacher and Wigglesworth was the, was the supplement minister. And the Holy Ghost was moving it around. He wanted Wigglesworth here on the world stage. And he wouldn't go there because he had his wife. She died. He let her go. She died again. He never recovered from it. But Psalms 51 brought him the Holy Ghost. And that's what everybody is really looking for is him. When you get to the bottom of it, the bottom line, that's who people are really looking for. The Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. And this person with Psalms 51. You and I are sitting here saved today. Today, why? Because twelve guys and a bunch of women went through Psalms fifty-one. Every one of them had to be broken to receive the incredible gifts of God. Peter had to be broken. He backslid. He he denied God three times. Now he had to reconfess it three times before he was ever going to be used. Then he had to be put in his place again because he was butting his nose in after he was restored. Hey, what about what about that guy? What's he gonna do? He says, What's that to you? Busy body? Nosy? What's your problem? Stupid. Peter became a monstrous Holy Ghost man of God. Why? He was broken when he denied Christ. He was booted out. In fact, Jesus said. After the resurrection, I'll go before you meet me in Galilee. Tell the disciples I'll be there and tell Peter. He wasn't even a disciple anymore. They had to tell him to bring Peter. Don't you see it? If had these people gone to Bible school, nothing would have happened. They would have closed the school 2,000 years ago. Ran out of funds. What God's looking for is a broken heart so he can dump loads of the presence of the Spirit out on the person. Arrogance, ego, money, these kind of things, they don't impress him. He's got all the money. He's not impressed with your money. Yeah. I know. Kenneth Copeland, he's a billionaire. Yeah. Woe unto you, a rich, for you already have your consolation. See, true riches don't come in money. It comes here. Brokenness. See, only somebody with integrity would call a feast out and invite everybody there. They couldn't possibly give them anything back. That's integrity. How do you get this mighty power from God? There you go. So easy. And it's so hard. Let's pray. Father God, tonight's message, I did the best I could. Lord God, there's a few people here tonight that are close to that breaking point. And there's a couple people here tonight who saw what I was teaching. They got it. They got it. There's some other people here tonight who didn't get it. And they're not going to get the touch of the Holy Ghost. And I know that. And I'm going to go home praying for them. I'm going to be hurt again. And you know my routine. But the ones that do get a touch, I go home thrilled. And the best way to get a touch from God, as you taught us, was the Lord is nigh unto those who have a broken heart. And he saves those. Who have a contrite spirit 
and I'll pray right now Lord that there's a whole room here full of tax collectors I'll pray there are no Pharisees here tonight. I pray a room full of tax collectors. I pray there's a room full of people here. Breasts, smoters, broken, broken, breast smoters. That's my prayer. Because I know those people are going to get healed. I know. I saw you heal that lady yesterday, Lord. I saw it with my own eyes. I've seen you heal. I don't know how many other people. You know, it's, it's spectacular every time it happens. But I've noticed the pattern, and I taught it tonight. I, I noticed it. The ones that don't get healed are not broken. And so tonight, I'm asking you right now to touch my friends and give them a contrite heart over the pain they have caused you. When they were hurtful to others and when they hurt themselves when they damaged themselves and then when they hurt others and when they hurt their family the person that was hurt the most was you you were hurt more than the others and I pray tonight Lord for every one of my friends here that are hiding stuff and have stuff they don't want to face through vanity through arrogance through pride I pray that there's no selfie sin here tonight. I pray against selfies in the name of Jesus. I pray against it. I pray that each person here will have a broken heart tonight and open their hearts and not pray like they pray at church. No, we don't need church prayer. We need we need somebody to pray from their guts. Someone that prays, Jesus help me. I turn the lights down in here, Lord, to give people some privacy, hoping that somebody will pray like that because nobody can see them. So why not? Pray like that? That's all I'm trying to do. Father, help them. Holy Spirit, you, you have to do this. I, I can't do nothing. I don't have any abilities. I don't, I don't have any skills. I'm helpless here. Spirit of the Lord, talking to you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his blood. Thank you for his presence. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for sending Sweet, sweet Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Help my friends. I'm pleading, begging. Help my friends. They need a breakthrough. There's some people here tonight who are frustrated and tired, very tired over certain circumstances in their life that won't go away. A certain person is beating them down and driving them down. Somebody's aggravating them continuously and it's just beating on them. And they're starting to get emotionally exhausted over this person. Or persons, Father God, I'm asking you tonight, let them break their hearts tonight. Let them break their hearts tonight. So the Spirit of the Lord can move. So the Holy Ghost can move. There are some friends here tonight of mine, Lord, that have some bad feelings about people in their past who were unjust to them and mistreated them and hurt them. They stabbed them in the back. They lied to them. They did ugly things. They stole money from them. They brutalized them, they abused them, and they still have ought. They still have bad feelings about that person. I pray right now, Lord, Holy Spirit, talking to you, begging you. Let your presence bring them conviction right now. Conviction of ought. Ought. Lord Jesus, help me. They ought not to have done it, right? I'm praying right now. Holy Spirit, come in the room right now. Come. Here at the Deliverance Center, we roll out the red carpet for you here because you're the one and only bring the presence of the blood and the broken body of Christ here tonight, the Son of God. Bitterness and ought. Bitterness and ought in the name of Jesus. I curse you to failure. I curse total failure upon you tonight. I curse death to you. I command you in the name of Jesus, ought and bitterness, die. You die. You die. Right now, pride and vanity, selfie and arrogance. I command you in Jesus' name. I curse you. I command you die. I command you to die in Jesus' mighty name. Every ugly, evil spirit from your parents and your grandparents, all these yeah. dirty sinners, all the dirty sinners in your family tree, I bind those ugly, evil spirits 
the perversion the incest the masonry all of it in the name of Jesus Christ we curse it to failure we command it to bow we command it to bow in Jesus mighty name all arrogance all pride every spirit that will not humble I curse you in Jesus name I curse you to fail I command you to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord I command you to loose my friends loose the children of God in Jesus mighty name I command you to come out in the name of the Lord arrogance and ignorance come out in Jesus mighty name I command you religious demons I bind your power you tell people to witness to other people so they'll get curses thrown on themselves I bind Christian demons come out now Christian demons, I bind your power. Come out in Jesus' holy name. I come against you with the precious blood that Jesus shed. I command you to loose the children of God right now. You religious demons, I command you to loose your victims right now. You 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 tell them to go to church and then they serve in church and they do this and that for that and they work in church. I command that to stop. Come out. You use Unclean vessels to minister. I know what you're doing you rotten spirit. I know how you work So come out in the name of Jesus Christ Christian demons I bind your power church spirits You are bound in Jesus mighty name Church spirits in the name of Jesus Ministry team come forward church spirits come out in Jesus name right now come out of there Come out if you're working in a church and you have an unclean life, that's a spirit hiding in your body. It's a religious spirit. You're going to cast that ugly thing out tonight in the name of Jesus. Every church demon, you get out of that body right now. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of there. Get out. You're living in sin and you're evangelizing. That's a spirit. That's a religious spirit. That's a religious demon telling you, oh, we'll fix it later. You can do it later. It's okay. You got to do something good. You got to serve the Lord. Nobody's perfect. He's given you a range of excuses. Just repent of it right now and come out. You rotten church demon. I bind your power. Come out in Jesus' name. I curse you to fail. I fail. I command you to fail. I command you to fail. Right now. You haven't cried in years in the presence of the Lord. The demon stole your tears. You won't cry. You're too proud. You're too scared. You're too insecure. I bind that evil right now in the name of Jesus. I bind you right now. Stop it. Stop it, spirit. I command you to let go of his tears. Let go of his tears right now. Let go. Let go. You rotten spirit. You're bringing condemnation and guilt. They don't have any sin anymore. I told that lady yesterday. There's no sins to pray for you know They're forgiven, but you keep condemning and I command you right now spirit of condemnation. I bind your power I command you come out right this second come out right this second come out right now condemnation I bind your power Come out right now. Just take a big yawn. They'll come right out a Big yawn. come out in Jesus name Come out Come on out Come on out Come on out. Come out. Come out. Right now. Go look around and see who's manifesting and give them, give them just the manifestors. Come out right now, I said. Right now. Every demon from your church. Every mega church spirit, every spirit you got at a prophetic meeting. You went through a fire tunnel. Somebody put their hands on you. They should never have touched you. Come out right now. I bind that prophetic spirit in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. Come out right now. Right now. Come out. You picked up a spirit from your spouse or somebody else you slept with. You should have never slept with that person. That spirit transferred over. I bind your power. You transfer spirit from adultery and fornication, oral sex, anal sex. I bind your power. I command you right now. Come out. Come out of there right now. Get out of that body. Come out right now. Come out quicker. Come out quickly. Quickly come out. There he is. Come out right now. I command evil to come out of you. I command you evil come out of you right now. Right now. Come out. I command evil to come out of you. 
Come out. Just take a big yawn. It'll come right out. The demons will come out. Sometimes they come out with yawns and then it picks up. Just take a yawn. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. That spirit that told you you're fine and your Christianity is okay and you're comfortable with that's a demon telling you that. That's a lie from the pits of hell. If you are not going forward, you are secretly going backward. You've been deceived. You're a spiritual fool. Just repent of it right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out, rotten devil. Now I said, come out of me. Come out. Say it. Come out of me. You do not hate the devil. You are you don't like him and you prefer him gone, but you do not hate him. You're going to repent of it right now. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. Now, in Jesus' mighty name, I release your hatred for sin and for Satan and for demons. I release your hatred. Hatred, come forth. Righteous indignation, come forth. You know all kinds of people that are living in sin and they're sick and they've got demons and you don't do anything about it. I command that demon of cowardice to come out of you. You coward, come out. Come out right now, you coward. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. There's some sin in your life. You're okay with it. You've tried to beat it, and it won't go away, so you just kind of pushed it aside. In the name of Jesus Christ, you target that sin right this second. You target that ought. You target that negativity right now. Do it quickly. Target it. I command you to come out of me. The sin that says to easily besets me tonight will crumble and fall. It will crumble and fall in the presence of the Holy Ghost. You eat because you're insecure. You overeat. The devil's trying to give you high blood pressure. He's trying to give you diabetes. Fight back now. I command you to come out of me. Every ugly spirit of pride and arrogance. Pharaoh spirits. Pharaoh spirits, I command you. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. You took a trip to a, the Middle East. You went to Jerusalem. You went to Egypt. You went to Saudi Arabia. You picked up a spirit when you were over there. You should have never gone over there. They got demons in the Middle East we never even seen over here. You picked up a monster when you went to Israel. Satan, I bind your power. You familiar spirit from the Middle East, I bind your power. Come out. Come out. Jewish demons. Demons from Israel. Demons from Egypt. Demons from Saudi Arabia. Come out in the name of Jesus. Right now. Get out of my body now. Apathy. Indifference. Come out. I command you, Satan, let go of my tears. Let my tears go right now. Let my tears go right now. I release my tears. I release my tears now. Not because things are bad for me. I've already had that cry. I'm going to cry in the presence of the Holy Ghost tonight. I'm going to cry in his presence right now. Satan, come out. Come out now. Go! Evil, come out! Evil, come out! Now! Fight harder! Get out of that body right now. Come out of my body now. Come out. Just repent of it. Just confess it. Just confess it. Just confess it. Come on! Confess it! Speak it out! Say it! Came from Oh, what's your need, on Sasha, what do you need from the Lord? The love of God. Love God with my whole heart. You want to what? Love God with my heart. What's blocking it? Demons. How'd you get them? I went to this room a few times. Were you abused as a kid or hurt when you were young? I was molested. Hmm? I was molested. What age? Uh, <clears throat> By who? My dad. Your dad did it? Real dad? 
Was a fondling or intercourse? And oral population. Oral sex, fondling, and oral sex. What's your dad's name? Gerald. Gerald. Here, raise your hands. That's the root of the problem. Raise your hands. Take a big breath. Is he still alive? Gerald, in the name of Jesus, wherever you are right now, wherever you, there he comes. I command you, come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out, Gerald. We forgive you. Come out of her. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Come out, Gerald. Come out of there. Hold that. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out of her womb. Come out of her vagina right now. Go. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come on out now. Go. Come out. Her dad molested her. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come on out. Now, if you've got your tears back, if you've got your tears and you're crying right now, come up front here. I want to talk to you. If you're crying, if you got your gift of tears back, come up here. Quickly. Hurry up. Come on now. Raise your hands. How are you, pretty? I love you. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. There you go. Let your tears go. Lord, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Every one of these ugly men that touch my body have got to come up tonight. Every lie, every false promise, every broken promise, come out. All the wickedness, all the evil, come out. Right now, come out. Come out. Just confess it. Lord, I'm so sorry. There it is. Keep coughing. Come out. Come on out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Let your tears go. Come on. Let your tears go. Come on. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come on out. Come out. Hold that right there. Come out right now. Come out. Lord, I'm so sorry. Say it. I'm so sorry, Jesus. Say it. I'm so sorry. God, forgive me. Say it. Lord, forgive me. Help me. Come on. The Holy Ghost is moving now. If you have to leave, thank you for coming tonight. I love you. Thank you for your donations. The box is on the door. If you don't have to leave, stay here and get healed. Just repent of it. Lord, I'm so sorry. Say it. Jesus, I'm sorry. Jesus, I'm sorry. Come on. Come out. Jesus' name, get out. Ruth, come out. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Get out of my head. Come out. Stop talking to me. Every demon in my head, come out. Every voice in my mind, come out and take Come out. All the men out now. All the fears. All the insecurities. All the bad feelings about my body. Get out now. Come out now. Go. Come out now. Jesus, forgive me. Say it. There you go. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Tell him. Lord, forgive me. God, forgive me. Come on now. There it is. Take another yawn. Big one. They're starting to come out. Go on. Another yawn. Come out. Yawn. Come on out. Come out right now. Come on out. You're not near done. Let's go. Come out, Satan. Come out right now. Every ugly man that ever touched your body, every person that cursed you, every person that said negative things about you, we're going to forgive all of them, and every spirit is coming out now. All of them, there they come. Come on out. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Come out. Let's get out of my body right now. Come out right now. Oh, that was good. Breathe. Breathe. Come out of her. Release her healing gift right now. Come out right now. Release her gift of healing. She's going to be healing in a second. Come out right now. Come out. Quickly. Go. Come on out. Come on out. Go. Go. Come out right now. Just confess it. Just confess it. Quickly. Go. Face it. Face it in Jesus' name. Just face it. Oh, God, have mercy on my soul. Come on now. You're a tax collector tonight. I decree you're a tax collector tonight. You're a tax collector. 
Come on, you're beating your breast. Come on now, you're beating your breast, you tax collector. Come on, get out of my body right now. There he comes. Get out. Go. Come out right now. Every disease, come out of her hips. Every disease, go. Every one of them, go. Come on out. Come on out. Let's go. What's your need, hon? Uh oh. Was it your mom or your dad you had a problem with? What's her name? Oh, Tammy, I remember that. Raise your hand. Lord Jesus, please forgive her for the breach with Tammy. The Spirit got in through this breach with the mother. Tammy, in Jesus' name. She's alive. Tammy, wherever you are right now, we ask the Spirit of the Lord to hunt you down and put your hands on Tammy and tell her that you love her. You love her. You understand her and you want to heal her. I want you to forgive her for what she done to her daughter. You forgive her, Lord. Forgive her, Lord. And now, miraculously, I'm asking you, give the daughter forgiveness for mom right now. I forgive my mother in Jesus' mighty name. I forgive my mother and command this cancer demon out. Mother be healed. Cancer, come out. Mother be healed. Cancer, come out. I break the curse of my mother off of me. Tammy, come out. Tammy, come out. Come out. Right now. Get Every trace of my mother, go. Every trace of my mother, go. I have my heavenly father. I don't need a mother. Go. I don't, mother, honey, I love you, but I have to let you go now. It's over. I turn you over to Jesus. I'm humbling myself, and now I'm casting all my care upon you. Mother and cancer, go. Out, I said. I forgive my mother. I release my mother. I forgive her. I release her. I forgive my mother. I release my mother. I release my mother. Satan, come out. If you hear voices in your head, you hear voices in your head. Come up here quickly. Voices in your head. Come up here right now. Come up here. Those voices in your head are not you. They are not you. What do you hear? It's more pictures. Than oh, visuals. Of Anytime I'm idle, it's lusty stuff. Like if I'm not in control of it, I'm going yeah. to sleep, I'm waking up, I daydream, it's constant yeah. sexual stuff. Oh yeah. All right, you ready? Now, Lord, you see this preacher here? I want you to give him the gift of hate tonight. Lost demons are tricky because they give you something you like. And lust demons are hard to get rid of because the person doesn't despise them. And Jesus said, You cannot serve two masters. You must hate. You must hate one of them. You must cling to one and despise the other. Now, Lord, the gift of hate for the man of God, the preacher. He's supposed to be preaching and healing the sick and everything. He's supposed to be doing everything in the book. And he doesn't hate these lust demons. Uh, and just do what he tells you. Do exactly what he told you. Do it right now. Get gift of hate. Come in. Come in right now. Hey, did you get that thing out of your head? That thing? She's still in there? Yes. Yeah, yes. Why? You what? Oh, she's still, still uh, hearing uh, your singing. Why? Keep, keep, keep coming all the time. Now listen. You hate that thing? 
You do? Yeah. Have you ever hated anybody? Nobody? In your life, you ever hated anybody? From here to here, have you ever hated anybody? Has she ever hated anybody in her past? No. I said, did you used to hate them? Is what I said. Not that you forgave them. Did you used to hate them? She's never hated anyone in her life. All the abusers, all the brothers, nothing. And did you ever hate anybody after your family? All right. Now, listen, we're going to have to pray and ask God to give you this, this gift of hate. Gift of what? Hate. Hate? For him. I hate him. Okay, now, how do you know that? Because you've never hated anything before. How do you know what hate is? If you've never hated anybody, how do you know what hate is? I hate the devil. What? I hate the devil. The devil. No, how does she know what hate is if she's never hated anybody? How do you, how do you know that? See? So she's, she, she tells she just went, I don't know, it's like that. You see that? You notice you just did that? Yeah. You're, you're too nice a person. When it comes to certain things, spiritual things, when it comes to the devil, that's not when you'd be nice. Have you, how long have you been married? Uh, five years. Five. Have you ever seen her mad? I mean, real mad. What did she do? She, she screamed and she yelled. And you listen, devil. Come out right now. Go! Go now! Come out! Go right now! Evil! Go! Jesus! Okay. Okay. Now, when did she do that? When did she yell at you? Scream! When? When? Yeah. Like uh, when she got upset. And when? When? Come out! Two, last week or yeah, ten years ago? Yeah, about last week. Or so. Last week. God, what is she mad about? Like things that uh, I, did, I didn't do it right. Uh, what you you screwed something up? Yeah. What'd you do? Like let's say I didn't uh, uh, charge the phone. You didn't charge the phone. Yeah, right. It wasn't right. Then you start yelling at him because you didn't charge the phone. Okay. Now you you have more. Uh, Enthusiasm and desire and fight over a phone, then you do that monster in your head. Do you notice that? If you don't charge the phone right, she'll let you know about it. Hardcore. Right? We need that with him. He thinks he thinks you don't really want him gone. He thinks he can stay there. He thought he could just not charge the phone and get away with it. He was wrong. He's wrong. You're mad. You're angry at him. Like the phone. Do you understand what I'm saying? She is quiet around him, but with the phone, she's in your face. Right? Come on. Do it right now. 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 Get out! Hey, hi, Mike. Hi. What you need? Wallace, nice to meet you. No, thank you. That's nice of you. Oh, yeah. Be happy, dude. I'll be happy. Uh, uh, go out there and get one of my cards. You got one of my cards on you? Here, go out and grab my cards. Oh, and if I, if uh, if they're empty, just ask Lori in the book, and then call me tonight, and I'll call you back. I have you come in for. Uh, you work? Uh, no, I'm going to be Okay, so you can come in during the day. Okay, I'll see you then. What's your Wallace? Wallace. Okay, thank you. Call me tonight. Oh, you came with him? No, Miss Collier. He came in. No, Miss Collier. 
Oh yeah. 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 Oh, he brought. It. Okay, good. Brought call me tonight. Let's call you. You remember this? Call you. Over here. Yeah, right here. Yeah. yeah. Is there, is there, is there, in, in Revelation, there's, there's, there's people coming back to earth, right? In Revelation, the rapture. Yeah. Yeah, it is. They, they do come back to earth. And then, yeah. then, then there's the, the other, the, 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 the market of the beast. There's that too, right? They need to be paid over in it. It's just the way, right? That's, you, you've already, you've taught on that probably, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. Okay, that's a sensitive subject, right? Mm -hmm. Real, 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 real. real. Yeah. Here's a picture of this thing, but yeah, I don't mind. There's room right here to get to the car. Yeah, go out in the lobby, and if they're not there, go in the bookstore and ask Lori. Okay, nice meeting you, Wallace. My dad, I, I, I've been here on a toilet seat. For, Who's that? My mom. That's your mom and dad? Oh, that's a nice picture. Where was that? Where was that? I was in, uh, that was a long time ago. Was Where at? In Phoenix? Uh, yeah, 21 to West Robbins Road. Oh, okay. That's a nice picture. Thank you. All right, thanks for coming tonight. Do you, you, you wear hats like this? Hmm? You, you, know, you know where to get hats like this at? Hats like that? No. 24th Street and uh, over there by uh, across from Brad Yard and there. Oh, okay. Like Fritz, Montez. Uh huh. You can, if you want to get some. You know, okay, well, thank you. No, no, thanks. That's yours. Here's a pair of glasses. No, I got some. Thanks. No, I got them. No, I, I have some. No. I have a pair. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, okay, well, yeah, thank you. My, my, uh, my appreciation to you. I'll give them this. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. I right. love you. What's wrong with you? What's going on here? Um, I have. Um, I have a I have a foot injury on my my left ankle. I've been dealing with for the last six weeks. Uh, what happened? I I tore my Achilles tendon. Um, I have dealt with asthma my entire life. Okay. And how'd you tear that? I was running and I tore it. And yeah, I, I asthma. What age? Huh? What age was the asthma? My whole life. As a baby? That you were born with. It. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. Good. Uh, hey, uh, can you help me with this guy? Now, uh, you had asthma and you're born with it. Was it? Would either your parents have asthma? What's that? Either your parents they have asthma. You had it yourself. Was they? Were they together when you were born? Say that again. Were they together when you were born? Yes. Okay. And then uh, were they in any kind of weird religions or sin or anything? Uh. No, my mom was, uh, my mom, not that I'm aware of that I can remember, but my mom was having left my dad out of wedlock and was with someone else while they were still, while they were still married. Before you were born? After I was born, so my mom left my dad. Are you sure uh, you're your dad's son? Yeah. You're positive? Yeah. Okay. Now, is there any sin you haven't repented of tonight? Got any uh, bad feelings about anybody? No, I've re I've repented for everything. I've asked God to take the, those my for my biggest sin that I feel I have is this dumb, this being dependent on with porn is my biggest struggle that I deal with. Okay. This, this, yeah. Uh, the porn's not normally the problem. Where somebody hurt you when you was a kid? Yeah, yeah. My Who? my my stepdad was a very emotionally. Your stepdad. Uh, my stepdad. What was his name? Raymond. Raymond. Okay, that's it. That's that's the end of it. Close your eyes. Raise your hands there. Raise your. And the, uh, hey, this guy's uh, needs prayer for his Achilles tendon after that. Get ready. Hey, you're getting healed tonight, sir. But your stepdad's got to come out of there. What's his name? Raymond. Raymond. Okay, take a big breath. Is the Raymond still alive? No, he's passed. He's dead. Okay, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask you to go back in time when Raymond hurt his stepson and hurt him bad. He wounded his soul and an unclean spirit from his 
Raymond got into his body one of Raymond's lust demons got in there and he became an adulterer and he became porn addict and he's focusing on lust Raymond and in the name of Jesus tonight Raymond's Lust, ha there it is, right there. Start coughing. Come out, come out of there, Raymond. There he comes. Come out, Raymond. Come out right now. Oh, here it goes. Go, hold on, right there. Hold on. Come out. Go in Jesus' name. Come out right now. Lord, go. Hey, did you get it? Um, no, you didn't get it. I got it. I uh, well, I confess this, but I I heard in my head, quit looking. So quit looking. Was, there's a girl at work. I'm looking at her. This week. Now that's not going to do us any good. Nothing, but I looked at her, and I can't. No. Let me say, like I, it's, I don't know how to get a. Uh, like I said, it's, it's not. It's, it's like I, it's like when I'm waking up in the morning or when I'm going to sleep at night and that kind of thing. Like, and, I'll, and when I realize it, I'll stop and you know. What's the benefit it gives you? The benefit. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. What do you like about it? Talk. About what? About the, the things you see in your head. I don't like. It. I don't nothing like it. Like about it. When I realize nothing. it, I. I, I mean, I used to. I, I used to be real bad at that sort of thing. I, now uh, you don't like it. I, I know. I do not I, like it. Like, I try real hard when I try to force it out of my mind. I try to yeah. find it and cast it out and all this. No. But it's, it, it's just. The problem is, it's a back, person. It like. No, it's not coming back. Uh, the, the, the stuff's coming back, but the person never left. There's a person in there. There's a lust demon in there. A person got in there. <laughs> You're a person. I'm a person. He's a person. But you don't hate that person. You don't like him, but you don't hate him. Right? Have you ever hated anybody? I have to assume that's right. Have you ever hated anybody? Huh? Who? Two people. I mean, Who's the worst one? Uh, I mean, uh, when I was younger, I hated my, my mom. I hated my well, how'd you act brother in law. And, how'd you act around him? Uh, hostile. Hostile. Thank you. That's right. You just answered your own prayer. Hostile right now. I command my hostility I had for my brother in law. That hostility I used to have for him, I now transfer it to this spirit of lust in my body. I am hostile to you. I am angry toward you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I'm hostile. Hostile. Uh, who's that guy? He's a friend I've known for like five years. He's coming out of Christian. You guys used to be dating? No, never. No. Now, who, what, are you married? No, I'm not. I'm divorced. And then, was your husband abusive? He was mentally and verbally. Was Basically, I knocked the crap out of him. You did? My, no, I said I would. I was abused when I was a kid from my father, physically and mentally and all that. So. And uh, did your ex-husband, what's your dad's name? Bob. Bob and your, and your, uh, uh, um, Sean, Robert, Sean. I just have a question. Yeah. How do you get a transfer of spirit or somebody curse, a curse upon you? Yeah. Through your dad. What was the name again? Bob, yeah. transfers in through your parents. So raise your hands. All right. Now, Lord, you see this beautiful woman standing here? She has fear of spirits in there. She has deep seated anxiety. But she has a good heart and she wants to see people get helped and healed. She likes to see people healed. And she, she wants to be a helper. 
but her dad put scars in her soul. Scars. Deep scars. And her dad must come out of her tonight for the rest of her life because she has a heavenly father now. She doesn't need a dad. And so take a big breath. It's coming out now. Come out. Come out, Daddy. I love you, but you must go now. Come on out. Come out. Come on. Every transfer spirit from my ex-husband. Come out of me. Let your tears go. There he is. Here he comes. Come out. Come on out. Come out. I release my dad right now and all his spirits. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. I always have to help everybody else, but no one helps me. Come out. Come out. Come out. Every demon I picked up hitting my ex husband, I command you to come out of me now. Come on out. Spirit of violence. Spirit of fear, come out of me. All my dad's verbal abuse, all of it. All of it. Hurting me, degrading me, hurting me. Come out, come out, come out right now. Okay, breathe, blow, keep blowing. Come out of her, come out, Dad. Dad, come out, come out. Abuse, there it is. Abuse, come out. Abuse, come out. Keep breathing. Breathe out of girl. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of her. Verbal abuse. Come out. Verbal abuse. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of there. Every ugly thing my dad did to me, I release it now. Everything he did. All of it. It was horrible. It went on for years. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Come out of me. My dad's demons tortured me. Come out right now. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Come out. I release my dad and all of his evil spirits. Come out of my stomach right now. Come out of my chest. I release my ex husband spirits. Go. Let your tears go. Come on. Don't hold back. Go. There it is. Keep coughing. They're coming out now. Come out. There he is right there. Come out. Next one. Keep coughing. Come out. There it comes. Spirit, go. Spirit, go. Hold that. Come out right now. Come out. Come out, devil. Go now. Go now. How you doing? Put your hand right there. Yeah. She's got demons from her ex-husband. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come out of her right now. Go. Come out. I hate you. I hate you. Go. 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 Go now. Come out. Come out. Keep coughing. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out. Everyone come out. Satan, come out. Every spirit from her ex-husband. Come out of her. Her dad verbally abused her. Her dad. Every demon from her dad. Come out. Come out. Come on out there. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out. Let your dad's demons come out. Keep going, sweetie. Go in Jesus' name. Come out of her. Pray harder. Pray harder. No, pray harder. Like your man. Satan, come out of her. Satan, come out of her. And a girl. Good. Good girl. Loser. Loser. I hate you. Come out of that body right now. I hate you. Hostile. 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 Uh, what's wrong with her? Spirit has been stabbing her. Dozens of them. Honey, now listen to me. You her son? You her son? Back over there. 
Hey, what's your name? Melissa. Melissa, listen. Uh, you made some bad choices. Real bad ones. Okay? And you let some monsters into your body. You hear me? What's that thing? You got anything else on? Okay. Close your eyes. What's your name? Again? What's your name, honey? Melissa. Father God, here's Melissa. And when she was young, she was beautiful. And she was hurt. And the devil sent her bad men. Bad men. And spirits transferred into her body through adultery. Oral sex, anal sex, abortions, lust, and pervert. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Spirit of death, abortion. Come out. Come out. There he is. There he comes. Come out of there. Come on right now. Hey, what's my name's Mike. Hello. Nice to meet you. You too. And what's your name? Daniel. Daniel. What do you want the Lord to do for you? Tonight? I don't know. Are you a Christian? No. Do you have any interest in becoming one? Uh, yeah. You do? Okay, here. Step over here. Close your eyes for a second. Just raise your hands like that. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus. Amazing. How's your foot? How's your foot? Did you forgive your dad? Did you forgive all those people? You forgave all those people, right? I'm forgiven. Yeah, what it's your lungs? Breathe. I can breathe. Breathe. Great. Hey, can you get me a mic? Yes, sir. Stay right there, sir. Hey, this guy sneaks around. Hey, can you help me with this guy? What was your name again? Daniel. He wants to get saved. He wants to get saved. He's not a Christian. He wants to become a Christian. Hey, stay right here for a second, will you? Hey. Hey. Now listen, we need some hardcore repentance from you tonight. You're in deep trouble. You let you let spirits in, the stronger ones. Okay? Now the Holy Spirit wants to deliver you and he wants to heal you. But listen, I need we're gonna need some more repentance here. Okay? Now just tell him you're sorry. Now Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. I want all of it. The abortions, the drugs, the bad men. All of it. The sexual perversion. All of it. The beatings. All the cursing. All the drugs. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Hi, hey, sir. Uh, what's, what's your name, sir? Terry. Terry, well, what happened to you tonight? I was having breathing problems. Come out of there. Come out. I was, I was having breathing Come on problems. Come out. Uh, Come out. There he is. Come out of her, you snake. Witchcraft and sorcery. Witchcraft. Come out. Sorcery. Come out. New age demons. New age. Come out. Come out of the body. Come out of her soul. Come out of her body right now. Come out of there. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. I, was, I don't know if you can hear me. Can Come out. Oh. I was having breathing problems and. My asthma. Come out of there. I came in for Come healing out. of my asthma. Come out of there. And Sorcery. healing of my foot. Every ugly man and ever touched me. Every one of I, them. I can breathe all a whole lot better than what I did when me. I came they in here lie. today. And on my ankle, I, I came in and I was I gave myself up limping when I was coming in. Jesus. And spirit of whoredom. Um, Come out of me. I'm feeling a whole lot better Come than what I did when I came in. There he is. Come out. Come out, you monster. Praise Jesus. <laughs> This lady's got every demon in the book. Come on, that body. The animosity I've had for my dad, for my stepdad, that the way he treated me, and the way he emotionally abused me, and just letting it go. Well, how you feel? Feel better. Yes, it does. 
Where? My shoulders, my back, my neck, Here? my hands. Here? Constantly always have a headache just because I work in the mental health field with that's of my clients. Oh, no. Now, they're all full of demons. Now, now can I get now, a, your dad, what's the worst thing he ever done to you? Beat the shit out of me. As at what age? Cut us, oh, God. Bro. Thank you, Lord. This woman of God, Father, oh, is rejoicing. Thank you for washing this temple, Lord God. Thank you, God, that behold all things are become new and all things are passed away, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every minute he criticized you for your forgiveness, God. I thank you for your loving virtue and your loving kindness, oh God. I thank you for your heart, Father God, of unconditional love for your people, oh God. I thank you, Father God, that you're wooing us back to your heart, oh God. I thank you, God, that you're giving us the the heart of the bride, oh God. The heart of purity to be devoted unto you, to be restored unto you. Oh, God. In the name Come of on. Jesus. He can't. Let da, 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 my dad go. He, da, 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 Release da, da, my dad. I thank you, Father God, Release that you dad. are a first love, oh God. He can't. Da, 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 da. If we seek you first, the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, on, all these here. other things will be added, oh God. I seek your heart, oh God. I seek, Father God, your desires, your I'm characteristics, out. oh God, your Satan. plans and your you. purpose for the earth. In the name of Jesus. Come out. The sin, Father God, the greater Come your grace, right now, oh go. God. The Come deeper out. the sin, oh God, the deeper Come your out. love and your mercy, oh God. There's Every nothing beating. that's too hard for you, oh Every God. Person. And I Every thank time you, he Father God. Me. I thank you, Jesus. Every time you hit me, all through my childhood, the Holy Spirit can remove all of it. Now, come on. I thank you for doing a mighty work, Come on, we want him to go. Every step from your dad, go now. I am the clay, oh God. I thank you, Jesus, that you consume everything that's not like you, Father God. That you stir up the refiner's fire, oh God. That I may come out like pure gold, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, consume everything that's not like you, oh God. And have your way, oh God. God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Okay. You are in control. That, that I humble well, you know myself I, I and I submit my, my ways I over to you, O God. I submit my thoughts over to you, O God. I submit my life over to you, O Lord God. Have your way in the name of Jesus. I surrender all to you, O God. Have your way, O God. Have your way, O God. Make me over the way that you see fit, O God. He shall not. May your heart's desire, oh God, be my heart's desire, oh God, in the name of Jesus. May my desires, oh God, may they be of you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Honor my footsteps, oh God, in your word, oh God. Lead and guide me in your path of righteousness, oh God, in the name of Jesus. He da 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 yes. Okay. It's still wow. into me imputed righteousness, oh God. So in the name of Jesus. Righteousness that gives and glory unto you, oh God. You. Not by works, oh God. And I in the name the of Jesus. Of murder out but of by your now. spirit, oh God. You get all the praise. Spirit of murder. You get all the honor. And you get all the glory. It belongs to you, oh God. He shot da 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 You are in control, oh Lord control. God. You are in control, oh Lord what? God. All power is in your hands, oh God. I praise you, God, you, God. and I honor okay. you, Lord okay. God. Yeah. With now, the, the heart of really thanksgiving, oh no God. In the name of Jesus, you are worthy of all honor. You're worthy 
glory of all praise in the name of Jesus. All glory belongs to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, that's him. He's coming. Wash me, oh God. That's him. That's the spirit of murder. Breathe. Breathe. In the name of Jesus. Breathe, girl. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of murder. Come out. There he comes. There he comes. Come out, you spirit of murder. Beautiful to behold, oh God. Spirit of murder. Come out. Jesus. Come out of our right now. Come out of our body right now. Come out of our body right now, I said. In the name of Jesus. Murder. Murder. Abortion. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Shame and guilt. Come out. Shame and guilt. Shame and guilt. In the name of Jesus. You are God of all heavens and earth, oh God. Did you repent every of that power, insanity? Every person, everything is subject to the name of Jesus. Glory it. unto you, oh God. Yeah, I know you Glory unto you, Lord God. Have, God. God. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Now, the demon that gave you that thought, you repented of it, right? Yes. I'm going to go broke. The spirit of poverty that gave it to you. Get out of my head. You spirit. The poverty, come out of me now. Go. Go now. Go now. Come out of me now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Spare the poverty. Go. Get out. Go. Go. Get out of my body in the name of the Lord. Get out in Jesus' mighty name. Evil, come out of me. Evil. Go. Go. Next one. What's that? Next thought. Uh, well, it's kind of on the same lines. It's, uh, I'm out of options for jobs, it seems like, but I'm not. You're not out of options? What do you mean? Well, you know, I've kind of tapped out. I just kind of, I got to rethink what I'm doing, but I know God can provide. It's just, I got to, I got to really preach my faith or believe that he will. Oh, you got doubt. Yeah. You have faith. Your faith is fine, but just mixed with doubt. Go ahead. Repent of it. Pray harder. Hey, Peter's brother's out in the hallway. He's got a back injury. He was here last night. He won't come in. He's laying on the couch. He says, I hurt to stand. I hurt to sit. I tried to get him to come in. Watch out, Walter. Hi, brother Mike. God bless you. I'm getting ready to launch a carousel. Hi, girl. <laughs> But listen, I don't, get him, I don't have a 501c3, no. and I don't have a recovery, and I'm trying to get in the East Valley to these kids that are committing suicide. Okay, great. So, but I, well done. Me until I get Why not? You would? Yeah. Just so I have a covering until I can do that kind of paperwork. Yeah, go get my card in the hall and give me a call and let's sit down and talk about it. Did you repent of that doubt? Okay. Ready? You spirit of doubt. Go! Get out of my body! Go! Go! Doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief. Go! Come out! Come out of me! Evil. Well done. You, your faith is fine. Because you wouldn't be doing that if you, if you didn't have faith. You, you wouldn't be doing it. What's going on? You got me at the... What happened? You got me at the spirit of cowardice because... I don't feel like I'm standing up for my kid. My 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 my, my brother was killed by the cops and the heroin people last year. And now, You're blaming yourself. Well, I don't feel like I'm stepping up to witness or be the be the strong man of God I should be for my daughter or for my brothers or for the rest of my family. Uh, now, now, first of all, 
Um, well, I can't do anything myself. I got to have the Holy Ghost help. Me. You can't do anything either, right? So you're going to repent of that self-sufficiency. I'm, I'm not able to muster enough hate and anger against against Satan. Screw with me or screw with my family and screw with my daughter. Okay, well, since you can't. And I, and I point it back on myself. And that's, since since you can't help your family, then you can rele you can release them tonight and give them to God. Since you can't help them. Yeah. My, Would my, you do that? My daughter and my ex, nine months, they just don't even contact me. So. Well, they, they don't like you. So yeah. they. Nothing they can do about that, right? Well, like there that. is. If you release them to God, and let the Lord have them. He'll go over there and fix them. But if you if, if you keep holding them in there, and see, uh, you can feel that grief and sadness all over you. You see how sad he looks? He's worn out with sadness because of his family. And I guess to a point where I almost punched out a client because I got so frustrated with me trying to help him. That I knew that was my own pain coming out, nothing to do with him. Yeah, that's more than pain. It's a spirit hiding in there. Spirit of rejection and disappointment and heart. Co Close your eyes, condemnation. Come out. Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of this man of God. In the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Come out of there. I let my family go now. I let my family go now. Rejection, come out of me. Come out. Come out of there. Okay, go. 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 I let my family go. I repent. I release my daughter. Go now. In Jesus' mighty name, go now. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come on out. Come out. Come out of there. Excellent. Excellent. Come out. Go. Get out of there. Come out. Come on out. Tell that thing to come out of there. How you doing? Alright, keep working a lot. You do, that's good. <laughs> what is the root of that? Um I just recently found out I had diabetes. So now diabetes is not the problem. Okay. Now did you used to hate yourself when you were young? I think so, yeah. Did you ever hate your body? Yeah. Did you ever hate how you looked? Yes. And when how young were you when that happened? Um it was after I got molested, so what age? I was 10 when I got molested, so about 11. So who molested you? Um, my mom's husband. Your mother, or stepdad? Stepdad, yeah. What's his name? Valentine. 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 Okay, close your eyes. Take a big breath. Close your eyes there. <sighs> Breathe. <sighs> Raise your hands. Valentine, you pervert. You fondled her vagina. You did all sex. But it wasn't you. It was your lust demons. And they got into my body when I was a child. The spirit of rejection in me. They then told me to turn on myself and to hate myself. To hate my body. Tonight, Valentine, in the name of Jesus, you and your rejection demon. And your lust demon, you gave me a lust demon, and I committed adultery, I eat too much, in the name of Jesus, all these spirits are going to come out now. Valentine, come out of me right now. Breathe, come out of her. Valentine, you pervert, I command you to leave your stepdaughter. Leave your stepdaughter right now. We forgive you and we release you. Go. Valentine, come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Valentine, come out of her lungs right now. Come out of them lungs right now. Go. Come out of her lungs. Come out of her lungs. Valentine, I command you in Jesus' name.
Come out of the vagina in a second. Come out of there right now. Come out of the vagina. There it comes. Keep coughing. Come on out. Come out of there. Come on out right now. Come out of her. Come out right now. Valentine, come out. Come out of her feet. Go. Come out. Valentine, come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Go. Go. Come out. Come out of her. You pervert. Pervert. Pervert and lust. Rejection. Self hatred. Come out in Jesus' name. Self hatred. Go now. Go now. Self hatred. Come out. Come on out. Go. Go. Come out. Hold that. Come out right now. Self hatred. Come out of me. Come on out of there. Get out of my body right now. Go. Come out right now. Self hatred. Go. Come out, you pervert. Valentine, I command you. Come out right now. Valentine, come out. Come on out. Come out right now. Valentine, come out. Come on out. Her dad molested her. His name was Valentine. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there, you pervert. Go. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. How'd that go? How'd that go? Where his ministry is. He's here on Thursday nights. Thursday nights, he comes here and preaches. Because I have a friend, she lives in Mesa, and she speaks Spanish. And I was telling him that yesterday I was at a problem here. I started manifesting. And my stomach started hurting. Yeah. Is it gone? You know, yesterday, because I wanted to call you. You have any, you have any pain in your body? Yeah, it went away at the bottom because I kept saying, I said, I'm not going to listen to you. I kept saying, I'm not going to listen to you, demon. I'm not going to listen to you. Reach me my body. And I started. Did it leave? Do you have any pain in your body now? No, just a wall of Pain there? Yeah. Yeah, now stand up. Oh. No. Oh. And then my, my feet. Were they are they healed now? Yeah, they stopped. They stopped. Okay, now pain in the back here. See pain in the back. Usually, usually pain in the back is uh, related to bad feelings they had about somebody in their past. Did you have a man who? Uh, Beat you. My husband, my dead husband. Did he used to? What was his name? Robert. Robert, did he used to beat you? Yeah, he was very abusive. Did he curse you? Oh, always cursing me. He was always. Did he, did he sexually? Uh, yeah, he abused me. Abuse yeah. yeah. What was his name? His name is Robert. Robert, here, close your eyes. There you go. Breathe out of your mouth there. All right. Father God, Roberts. Evil spirits are in her body right now. They're not all out. He was horrible to her. And if he was here right now, if he's here right now, we would forgive him. We would forgive him, and she's going to forgive him right now, totally and completely. And Robert, you are going to leave your ex-wife right now in the name of Jesus. Robert, come on out. Come out, Robert. Come out. Come out of her back. Come on right back right now. I just do it. I um try crawling sky. I mean they took it to get free to me. You got what? I just told me to call Scott. Oh yeah. Then he was he able to do anything? Maybe you can help me. We'll get a hold of Scott? Oh, okay, you called. Did he call back? I have not. I've been, I've been calling him every day. Oh, you have. Does he answer the phone? Is the answering machine? I'll answer the voicemail. It is Scott. Scott. It's the right number, right? Yeah, the one you gave me. That's the correct number. I guess. I mean, does Scott answer the voicemail? 
Yeah, it was a it was a guy after the voicemail. Who, does it say who it is? Maybe I gave you the wrong number, and that's you've been calling the wrong guy. Is that it? <laughs> and I texted. Is that his number? Huh? Yeah, that's the right number. Okay. Call that number now. See if he answers. Hello. 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 Did I lose him? Hello. No, that's a voicemail. Oh, is it going to voicemail? Hey Scott, this is brother Mike. Hey, I got a friend, friend of mine that needs to get to a, get an appointment, and uh, she's right here. She's going to leave her phone number. Streamers. Streamers, this is Brother Mike. Next Friday night, Rick will be here for a blowout Holy Ghost service. Next Saturday, uh, I will be in Prescott ministering at the Aglow Seminar. I will not be here next Friday. Brother Rick will be here for another amazing one of his services. The Spirit of the Lord showed up tonight. Huge. Lots of people delivered tonight. It was amazing. Some guy got healed of a torn Achilles tendon. It was something else. So thank you for your prayers and thank you for your donation. See you next time.